Oh, this is a good book. Ew. This is a. There's great books in this house. Yeah, no, but this one, this one, <laughs> for you, for for what you're doing now. Yes. I'd read this book. What is that? It's like it's basically how to test people um, psychology. It's just psychological testing methodology, mm. you know. So like behavioral okay. testing and everything mm. else. And because people share what so makes much of their you lives think I can't test on social people. media these days, right? You can yeah. actually do a psychological assessment on someone, you know. And some guys don't even understand that. It's like, oh, you're 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 playing with a guy who's psychologically analyzing you, who's analyzing you, saying, oh, okay, I say this, what are you gonna respond to? Uh, I'm just saying, it's like, wow. you know, I know, and what you feel is exactly the same thing I feel. It's like if you go out and you're like, hey, and niggas are like, yo, no, let's go to such and such a spot. And you're like, hold on, I'm going to go to such and such a spot so I can, what, be a sponsor, be a bursar to some kid who's in varsity, who's selling herself to any Tom, Dick and Harry who's willing to buy a six case of Savannah or ice cream. Imagine. Or what. Ah, <laughs> now Imagine. Me, you're joining level, that same At man. my godly level, she now needs to now. You, I know it. You're giving her a piece <laughs> of that. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> that's why I look at why? things. I'm like, eh, but for please. me, that's why I don't partake. <laughs> I don't. Know. So I feel you on that. <laughs> that's why I don't partake. Nah, nah, yeah. like, niggas, nah. I see what niggas is rolling around in that uh, yeah, parading that shit. I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not respecting me as a Swiss. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I know it's I can't, dog. <laughs> I can't, dog. Why? You have, I don't. You have no respect for the niggas. niggas What's that about? It's because they're trying to smash the same hands. And I'm thinking to myself, hold on. Y'all niggas <laughs> want to come together and say, yo, did you also smash? <laughs> yes. And, and that's, that's it. That's the vibe. That's it. <laughs> I'm like, all right, nah, niggas. That can't be the vibe, niggas. Yo, that's crazy you say that because... Some nigga just did that to me like a couple of days ago. Like, <laughs> I walked in the room, I was there for five minutes. He called the nigga that he knows smashed the same mommy I smashed. He's like, yo, this guy knows that mommy. I'm like, no. what the hell? What has happened to niggas? It's bitches. Niggas, <laughs> I'm telling you, bitches are fried niggas, man. Niggas talk more than bitches these days. That's the thing. Niggas, uh, bitches are fried niggas' minds. N- niggas can't tell bitches like, what the but fuck why are niggas so fried? Huh? Why are niggas so fried? Because they ain't got shit, they're weak. Yo, can we have the room? Can me and Nota have the room? Thank you. <laughs> okay, never mind. It's crazy that the answers nobody had I found when searching for myself. Let's toast to victory. Pick up your glass, show me love for once. So Sorry, continue, sir. Why are niggas so fried is what I was asking. Because they Why do you think? They're weak. Why are they Because they're so raised by bitches. Mm, that's painful, no, sir. I mean, come that's on. That's painful. Uh, Wait, like, honest. and I know you mean it, you're saying it in those words, because no, you Western, mean it no, in, in those in, words. In, 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 they're raised by bitches. I so it. there's people who weren't raised by mothers, they were raised by mm. bitches. So Ooh. their mentality comes from the bitches that raised them. That's painfully true. That is it's, so it's, crazy. It, you understand? So there's so many bitch niggas that are raised by bitches <laughs> around and you're like looking around. And as a real nigga, you start to feel lonely. Yo, thank you for saying that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> you say like... And for articulating like, it that dog, well. Nah, dog. So it's, it, it's just weak. Wow. The wrong women are getting the... The wrong women are getting attention. From niggas. Oof, that is also true. Niggas who... And the wrong niggas also. The thing is this. These niggas wouldn't get a bitch to talk to them before they got a tender or before they had a political connection. Mm. They, they wouldn't get a bitch to talk to them. Mm. Never mind know their name. This is a fact. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So now these same niggas, right, who we've been looking at these niggas struggling. We've been, like, <laughs> in the club, we're seeing niggas is pulling out bottles and all that stuff to try and get the girls that we're getting for free. Mm. And we're like... These are real life stories. You understand? We're like, okay, fine. Let me stay in this club for as long as possible and make you spend as much money as possible. Make you drop all of it. <laughs> to have this honey. <laughs> because she ain't shit to me. 
Because I don't want it. I don't actually. want to actually. <laughs> but I can see you're excited. You're sending all the bottles. The you're dying are about it. Eh, eh, eh. So there's no respect to gain from niggas. So you don't respect the niggas right I now? I don't respect any of these niggas. I feel the same way. You know, that's the thing. Is that niggas are like, yo, but you got <laughs> beef with these niggas? This niggas? Nah, dog. I don't respect them at all. So, like, if I say something oh, no. and niggas are like, no, but you're being disrespectful. I'm like, I'm not being disrespectful. I never had respect Ooh. for this person to begin with. <laughs> you understand? I I'm not you. withdrawing with respect. Mm. I'm starting from zero. What made you want to be so vocal with, with the... With the Okay, not disrespect, but I get. I guess they know. They know respect. No, be, so be honest, honest, yes. Yeah, what honest. made you wanna be so honest? <sighs> like from jump, because it had to have come from the from the rap life pain, because that's nah. when you started talking so much. Nah, you see, that's the thing. A lot of people would think that that's pain. Imagine. That did you trying to say that didn't pain you? Don't it, you dare! No, it, there's no way it pained me. What? You need, you need to understand, if I can see that you're a bitch. Oh my I know goodness. You're a bitch. You understand what I'm saying? So no, I'm looking at this bitch and I'm thinking, I'm going to give uh, this bitch. Nota, the language. It's, 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 the, it's the real language. I'm going to give this bitch enough <laughs> rope to hang themselves. You understand what I'm saying? So I never had any anger or any animosity. Otherwise, I would have fought. I never fought. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? You pulled up at people's houses, bitch. You were going crazy. Nah, 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 nah. I pulled up at, at, at Makwa's crib because he was leaning too much and he was, he was being sent to talk shit about me on, on podcasts. Was yeah, being I'm sent? He was sent, I know. What do you mean sent? Uh, what I'm telling this you is this, is that when I went to his house, the reason I went to confront him at his house, I wanted to find out <laughs> this shit that you're talking about me. Who is telling you this shit? Who sent you this? And he exposed. He told me exactly what happened before he went live, before he turned on the live. <laughs> and I came to his house and I said, Chief, I'm going to spill your fucking lean. Why? Because you're a bitch to me. I've got no respect for you. I can pull out what's in your fridge so, and spill oh, it. He's a bitch why. to you. Let me tell you why. The reason why he's a bitch to me is because you, you oh. can't be renting an, a, a, a crib. That's why I went to the crib. I'm like, dog, you're talking shit about me, number one. Mm. Your girlfriend was pregnant. I gave you the money for your, preg for your pregnancy, dog. I'm not fucking that girl. You understand what I'm saying? But you came to me as a nigga in, in desperate need of assistance. Mm. And I came through for you as I always do. Mm. Anytime you've ever needed assistance. I've never asked you for your assistance to assist me with anything. Ooh. Anytime there's ever been assistance been going, it's been sent by me to you. You understand? Okay, so, this one is hard for me. No, no, no. Hey. This, this is... This is <laughs> I, I guess you were asking why I, hear why you. I went to the I crib. I didn't know that's how you were going to put it So I went to down. the crib. So no, I went to the crib because I'm like, mm. dog, you can't be talking shit about me. Snin when your girl is, it, it, it needs to go to hospital and everything else, I'm the one who's paying for it. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm. I'm the one who's paying to cover all your bullshit. Basically, you're my son. Right now. Mm. And you're wasting my money, dog. I'm paying for the roof that is over your head right now, and you've got these motherfuckers out here. Where are your kids? I paid for this shit so that your kids can benefit, not these strange motherfuckers. <laughs> no, that I don't know it's a whole love. Love. <laughs> But that's the truth of the matter. That's why I'm so angry. I I, if I come to your Okay, crib, so there was some anger there. No, I'm angry at Makwa as a human being. It's like me angry at Zinga. You're not Zinga, angry you at all of me. them as humans? A dog. Weren't you? It sounded like it because you, you went out there scolding niggas. Who? You were scolding who, niggas. Who did I scold? Everybody you who, spoke on. Who did I scold? Who, who did I scold? Everybody you spoke on. I you just scold scolded this man right now. No, I'm telling you what, when I scolded him. I'm telling you about what happened. <laughs> I'm telling you about, yes, I've, I've spoken. I've never scol scolded so anybody else. So you scolded niggas. I've only scolded Makwa. You scolded niggas. No. I've You've told niggas, mother. you niggas can't even do your own business out there, but you want to come here and that is scolding niggas. Which niggas? The niggas, oh, I, mean, I don't know I don't which niggas. I haven't scolded niggas. I haven't scolded niggas. I've scolded Okay, that's fine. I hear you. I haven't scolded niggas. Mm. You understand? I can mm. observe and have an observation, have an opinion about something. To scold someone made, is a completely different what thing. What made to you want to start saying these things out loud and on record? Because, number one. Because <laughs> you've put these things on record. Nah, you need to understand that our culture is very influential. Mm. 
And um, okay. what people don't understand is that the media is what socializes our culture, our people. It's what socializes our people. You're taught everything you know by the media. You learn from watching TV, from listening to the radio, from listening to the news. That's Your true. values are decided by what's on TV. When they say this guy's a criminal, he's stolen, then you know, okay, this is what a bad guy looks like. This is what happens to bad guys. You, you don't see him drink going, anymore, no? Mm-mm. I stopped t- in everything. No? You, you, you didn't know 2010. me drinking. Yeah, you didn't know me drinking. So, um, ever? Yeah, you, you didn't know me while ever? I was, when I drank. It was only just high. Whenever you were in a never inebriated space, it was always okay. It was always just a chat. Okay, continue. Sorry. To yeah. You. So I mean, I had to take responsibility for the game. A lot of the game I fathered. So, <laughs> and you know, let's go. <laughs> you know, talk see, that I know, shit. It's not, it's not even about talking that shit. It's like yo, I, I'm just loving it. Don't no, mind me. It's not even a, the thing. Is this, I understand how niggas feel when I say that, but it's like break it down. Okay, what would make you think that I didn't father the game? I'm, I don't think that you didn't. I'm not saying I, I put in the work. I've mm. been in this game 17 mm. years. Straight, I've never solid. denied you. No, no, I'm just saying. Mm. So I've but done so, the work. Mm. I've done the work. So because some little pipsqueak who only knows the music business because he sees it on MTV and listens to it on radio <laughs> has an opinion about me, mm. that doesn't mean that I haven't earned my stripes in the industry. That's a fact. You understand? So I am speaking from a, a person who has earned their stripes who within has the lived industry. It. Now, people criticizing that because they're fans of so and so and so and so and what what, right? Mm. They need to understand that I don't give a shit about them. That has nothing to do with you. You understand? Yeah. Just because you're, you're mad because, yo, this guy said something about my faith. Mm. Doesn't mean that. I understand it that sentiment. Me. You know, so mm. f- for me, the, the feeling, the responsibility, and the need to do it is that who else is going to do it? Who else is going to be in a position? where they can actually speak these things. Because mm. a lot of niggas can say shit, but then somebody's going to come and say, yo, let's take this bread from you. Let's mm. take that from you. Let's take that from you and see if you still want to talk. Mm-hmm. Whereas there's nothing <laughs> they can take from you. <laughs> say that again. <laughs> uh, let's take this bread from you. Let's take that bag. Let's, let's see if you still want to talk after that. Mm. So you're saying there's people who can be silenced. There's voices. There's that many. Because mm. niggas have been put on the game. I, no one put me on. Ever. Mm. You don't feel like niggas put you on? No one ever put me on. Ever. I put everyone, I, I always put niggas on. I was always in a position to put niggas on. Mm. Break when I went down. to Bada Bing, I yeah. went there to put them on to social media. Because I said, this is going to be bigger than your PR. It's going to make you fire this PR lady. Make her mm. useless. Right? Mm-hmm. What is Slick on Life doing now? Social media campaigns. That's his entire business. That's his entire business. When I came... As a high school kid saying, yo, you don't know anything about this. Let me put you on. I put that nigga on. I so, taught him that business. So you're saying you, you put I, him I on? I did. I, put him, I, I even did a whole entire PowerPoint presentation to say how the website business is going to work, the future of all that shit. Mm. Slick on Life is my b- creation. <laughs> no, like, while I was at Ventilation.coza, spending the hours, I was trying to make sure that this nigga can continue with this website and this content creation thing properly and monetize it because that was the function of the business that's what i was there mm. that's my job that's that's what you're doing as so, the social media manager <laughs> at the website company that's what you're doing that's your job is directly that yo but calling it your baby is crazy no the thing you are from your observation that's crazy i spent those hours i'm just saying it's crazy i spent those say hours that. putting together the presentation doing the research and everything else that's my baby that's my blood sweat and tears that went into that okay i hear you that's the word i hear it's, that it's like it's like i hear that it's like <laughs> This thing is gonna grab you. You pull out, you, you pull out a PhD. It, mm. it's, it's, it's something completely different, dog. The person who put the work into putting this thing yeah. together is completely different from you the person put who, respect on who their reads name. this thing and then gets a degree because they read a textbook. Okay. You understand? I'm the person who put together the textbook. Woo! Uh, you're saying to a, to a yes. slicker, anybody, anybody, a rap game. To put, all the people uh, that Anybody, uh, the whole entire industry. <laughs> the entire industry. The no. whole of. Dog, nobody knew how to use social media until mm. I came into the industry and mastered social media.
Okay. Nobody knew how to use you're it. You're saying you're the master of the I socials. I mastered it, dog. I mastered it, dog. Slicker and them had to bring Ludacris and shit and, 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 and Sprite to three quarters fill a venue I was filling by myself with my homies. What venue is this? Black Orchard. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. So You were filling it with your homies now on what level? This as venue? in the, I was booking the venue. Filling it. Doing events at the venue. When nobody was booking DJ Dimples, DJ Milkshake, DJ Jaws, all mm. of them. They were still being managed by Tibbs. You had to book okay. Milkshake via show. Show, show Tibbs yeah, love. Show Tibbs love. You understand? Show you had to, show, you had to show Tibbs love to, 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 to get Tibbs Dimples love. and Milkshake and stuff. This is before they had pop bottles and all yeah. that type shit. Yeah. I was booking them with my money while I was still in high school. You were booking them with your money? Yeah. Okay. Because I was doing events. And then I was making money. Mm. And nobody was booking Have hip-hop Have we started apps. the show? Uh, welcome our guest for the day. Thank you. Unota. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> here to chop it with Buddha T, the lord of the entire, out there to the South Africans, lord of the every, lord of the every damn thing, lord of the most, lord of the entire, the highest. Please believe it. <laughs> welcome, sir. You, you were saying... Yeah, so, you know, fathering the game <laughs> meant that, you know... This is my guy! That's how you picked it up? <laughs> okay, so fathering the game. <laughs> yeah, it meant that at some point I had to be dead. Okay, you know? to, and it, to a lot of niggas. To the entire game. And you, you, you don't... So who are these men you're saying every, you played dead to? What do you mean, Doc? I'm mm. an example. Think about it. Is there anyone who's an executive who has been in the rap game, who has been in the, whatever, podcasting game, you name it. At my level. Even me, the podcasting. I, you're I'm, my daddy. I, well, <laughs> look, I'll, I'll say that I, 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 I taught South Africans how to get onto pods and actually have conversations that can shape the country. Okay, you're saying you're the one who gave us that juice. I, like, nobody was doing it before me. Before oh, I did, we never be, had before, that juice. Before I did, before I did um, my podcast and chill interview with Mac G, niggas mm. would just come there, tell their stories, yeah, whatever. I was <laughs> the only guy that went there where nobody knew who I was. Ooh. Nobody knew who I was until I went to Mac G and pod. Okay. As soon as I was done, everybody knew who I was. And when that's you, a very big difference. Why? Okay. It's because the way in that which I did that. That is a very big difference. Okay, very when you say it like that. Yeah. Oh, you say Everybody like then watched my episode and said, damn it. Watch when the I guy they back, didn't know. Everybody yeah. watched the, the guy, guy they didn't, didn't know, know. And be like, oh, how can this guy just, yo. And people are watching and people are commenting engagement and everything else. And if you watch that episode, even to this day, like each part of the episode got like 2,000 comments or something like that. What did you talk about that day? I talked about everything. I talked about the game. <laughs> you were going crazy. I, I know how to That's say the things that will get the people going. Mm. I wasn't even on a rant, dog. What were you... T- okay. I wasn't even on a rant. But that's, the only that time was... I had a rant was when I did... Um, what's this thing? Um, um, what's this? Yo MTV Raps with Scoop. And I was okay. sitting there next to Scoop. And he's interviewing <laughs> me on... Uh, you on scolded Scoop also at some point. Afterwards, yes. Because I'm like, this nigga is being disrespectful to me. Number one, you're not at the level to be even asking me these questions. Your, your, your favorite superstars are on my payroll. As in, you've seen them in this country because of me. Your, your superstars, the people that you celebrate, the people that you... You, you understand? What you do you never, mean by that? Whatever. What? You? W- whatever you mean. <laughs> if, if that nigga has ever said anything about Rich Homie Kwan, if he's ever said anything about Ross, if he's ever said anything about Wale... Okay, I hear you, I hear you. You understand? Okay, I hear you. Now, you need to understand that <laughs> from that perspective, you need to now treat me like I'm Heineken, like I'm Castle Light, like I'm MTV Base. Because you're doing big business. Because I'm doing what they're doing. That's that's the facts of the matter. You you understand what I'm saying? Okay, I hear the language. So, I hear so the language. Just the way he was so dismissive, and I'm like, people are gonna watch this. Wait, make so a chump of he me. was dismissive of, of me. while I'm on the show. You know, of what? Right? Of your stripes? No, or? just like the way he's asking questions, and I'm thinking to myself, who's oh, just playing with you on, I'm on like, TV. Dog. <laughs> yeah, you know. So I'm like, you know what? Okay, when you say I'm that, when you say that, I just want to ask you a quick question about that because I think there was a point when 
people felt like he played with Ndugza on television. He did that same thing to me. He did the same thing to me, and so I was like, you see, did you I never feel said like anything. he played with Ndugza? Yeah, he then. did. He disrespected Ndugza big time, dog. I still feel like he played with Ndugza, dog. Dang. So you feel you felt like he was trying to do you the same way? Dog, that's the way he is, because he only sees these Americans. So I was like, oh, okay, why not? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> dog, he's a guy from basketball. He's a guy that loved basketball because he watched it at night on TV. You know, yeah. I don't know where he watched it because he didn't have DSTV growing up. So obviously he had friends who had access to DSTV. Yeah. And then he watched a basketball there and then he became a presenter. He started playing the sports and everything else. And then they said, oh, well, <laughs> basketball must be an analogous with hip hop. Hey, so you must be a hip hop expert. Scoop Let's is put a great TV. baller. He played ball. He's a real baller. He yeah, no, he out. did. He's even a referee. Like and he, so he, he knows that lifestyle. He was in love with it. So I guess he grew yes. up on it. Yes. Yeah, it's not like he's faking yes. it. Yes, and he's talented as a presenter. Like, the mm. guy can go without a script. He's a one of a one. He's, he's a one he, of he's one. He's a one-take wonder. Yeah. Problem is, he likes discipline. <laughs> you know? So Lex. I'm thinking to myself, discipline. yeah, I'm thinking to myself, this nigga was making a fool of himself. <laughs> oh, in front come of on. The, in front of the Swazi <laughs> royal family. Come on, family. Throwing lettuce all over the floor <laughs> in Swaziland. <laughs> DSTV had to even call me. Wait, because so what do you mean? I'm just saying that before I went there, before I went to um, this, uh, your MTV Raps, I'm saying, this is how, uh, this, this nigga scoop. I sent someone with an H1 to go look for him wherever he disappeared in Swaziland so he could get to work at Vuzu, <laughs> at uh, Massive uh, Music, or whatever it is on DSTV. Okay. I got him to work because someone who works with him said, yo, this guy, he was at this gig and you can't get all of him. He's got a shoot at such and such a time. Please make sure he gets so them So you time. were in Swaziland? I was in Swaziland for Hypnotic Festival. So how did you, shout out to Hypnotic? He was booked as an MC. How did you find him? Is I've what said, I wanted to I, ask I, you. I knew where he was because I was, in, I was leaving Swaziland. How did you know where he was? Because he was wilding out. Was he at Hypnotic? He was at Hypnotic, he was MC. <laughs> but he was wilding out after Hypnotic and everything else. So I sent some of my resources, yo. My resources, mm. look out for this nigga, find him, bring him back to Joburg, make sure Tell he gets to, to work get to on work. time. Mm. You understand? There's someone who, who's a colleague of his, you know, who's a friend of mine, and I want to make sure that this nigga gets to work on time. So I'm thinking to myself, this nigga is the same nigga that I'm willing to cover his back. Mm. The second time, he was stuck at a gig in Rustenburg, and I think his friends or whoever he came with left him. Mm. So I was like, no, let him ride with us. Yeah. And I said, yo, Makwa. You Marqua. vouched for him. I said, Makwa. Come sleep in my hotel room. Mm. I'll share with you so that this so stranger <laughs> can have a room to themselves. <laughs> Why? Why are you calling him a stranger? Because I'm not gonna, I wasn't going to share a room with him. I'd rather share with Marqua. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. <laughs> you felt more comfortable with Marqua in the room. I, you understand? Because oh, okay. I'm trying to look out for the nigga. Because you're trying to look out for the so stranger. So now I see you at your workplace. <laughs> yes. And you treat me with disrespect as if I didn't clean up your ass. Oh you my it. goodness. Oh my goodness. No, no ta. But that's, that, that was my whole entire experience. So that's why I, 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 I had to give him a rant. I that was your experience. Wait. That's my experience of You're him. You're calling it your experience. It's of him. Oh, okay. That's was my experience of him prior to that. So, I, so when he sees me ranting, to him Guys, he's like, how's this nigga? I'm sorry, real quick. We do need better bacon packaging in life, just in, as a general thing. Like, we are all, as people who cook, we cry. Continue. Yes, Scoop, you wiped his ass, you're saying. P practically. You know? Um, Why do you speak like that, though? I think that's the thing that's offensive for the niggas. Like, okay, but why you had to say nah, it nah, like nah. that? You see, if he had shown me respect, I'd Or you would have kept it respect. You understand? I've got no respect for him. Damn. Okay, so... You lo after you've lost the respect for niggas, that's when you start letting it go crazy. That's what nah, you say. If I don't have no respect for niggas, I give niggas the the, the but, modicum. But of you respect come with that respect. Though, is what I'm saying. I, the modicum okay. that is expected of the someone. Worms? The modicum. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 that little amount. <sighs> Wait, the just minimum. yeah, the minimum amount that is required to be cordial. And mm. to be a nice person, I give you that one. That standard one, it was like, okay, no, clean. And that's that. You give the, so the, the starter pack. I give you the starter pack <laughs> automatically. Yes. yes. And then you decide what you do with that starter pack. And then if they play with the starter pack, then... Then it's off. 
But why must it be war? It's why can't war. you just turn it off without... How is it war? How is it war? How is it war? How what you gonna, mean you how going are you gonna disrespect crazy, me? How are you going to disrespect me on TV, dog? <laughs> While I'm sitting there. You disrespect <laughs> on me? On television. On television, dog. So that the, the public can see you disrespecting me. It's, it's war, dog. Okay. Because you're playing with my name? You're playing with me. You're playing with my time as well. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Seriously. It's, okay, it's, it's offensive. It's very I offensive. Hear you. It's very offensive. I and hear also, you. I'm thinking to myself, like, I spent 70,000 rands of production, additional production value, so that we could shoot a performance for this Yo MTV Raps show. None of the other guests actually spent money on their production for this show. Mm. I oh, spent for that Quest, money. Uh, you guys I, were I, making I, I it look fine. While I was in New York, even. <laughs> I wasn't even there to be, to be there. Big boy. They to, no, they had to perform the song without me because I'm actually on the song that they were performing. What song is this that Preacher. you're on? What song is it? It's called Preacher. It's a song called Preacher. So, okay. So that was the, that was the whole entire thing with Scoop is like, you know, dude was just being disrespectful. And that's a, another thing is that dudes forget that I'm sober minded. <laughs> so that disrespect that you gave me when you were drunk one day. Oh, so that's why you're, you're, you're still spilling it. niggas is lean and I'm shit. I'm just saying, you understand? It's not even about spilling niggas lean. The, the, the nigga was really going through a lot, right? Mm. And he needed a, a real wake up call to say, yo. But you hate the consumption. Like, no, it was it, it, nothing. A dog. He's an adult, he's a grown man. Yeah. But if you're drinking lean and you're not taking care of your responsibilities, yeah. then it's a problem. Then it's a problem. It's a problem. If I come to your crib and there's five niggas here, you just had a newborn baby who's not with you, and I gave you guap so that you could be with your newborn and you could be together and be a pops, do the things that pops need to do in the first couple of months. Kids get sick all the time. You've got a whip. You've got all these things, mm. and your kid is not benefiting from that shit. But what if he's deciding to maybe try and invest it in his dreams? Nah, dog. <laughs> I know him. I know him better than that. I know him better. I know. I know him well enough to be the nigger that when he needs something, you, I need such and such equipment. I'm the person who helps him invest and get that shit. Yeah. So he's misusing that investment. So you knew he wasn't spending it on the train. He wasn't. Dog. They were chilling at the crib. They were drinking lean, smoking weed the whole entire time with niggas who don't give a fuck about you. You they know that's how you niggas feel. They want to create. I understand, but those niggas are just with you because they want a for the lean. For a come up. No, oh. for a come up. You're going to make their career blow up. And I'm saying, yeah. dog, the only reason you're famous is because I made you famous. Oh my goodness. No, that's the truth of the matter. Wow. That's the truth of the matter. Otherwise, you'd be out there crying. You co-signed, Malcolm, uh, 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 You'd be crying over your, your spilt milk with Fister's Mixwell because he swapped <laughs> that song from you. That's where, that's where your career would have Oh, yeah, it had a song stolen from him. You know? So that was the whole entire point. So now you're here and you're misusing this opportunity. Any kid from the streets who could make beats, dog, I could have given that same opportunity. Oh my goodness. What? I don't have paper towels. What the hell? Yeah. What this type of Victoria household is, is this? Okay, sorry, yes. Every kid in the township would want to... Yeah, that opportunity, I that you. access. You understand? Because that's how the industry works. You're not mm. going to get into the industry in JNJ on your own. Nobody yes, knows you. Yes, You do need to get somebody to say, yo, let him in. You understand? You need a tag. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then to get into VIP. Mm, I feel you. So I put you in the VIP, and then I find you have taken your tag and given it to every Tom, Dick, and Harry. But Slicker, and now, and Slicker now put you in he VIP. Didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't. I, I put him on. You must remember that. In VIP, Again. he put you in VIP. He didn't. You didn't put him in VIP. I put him in VIP. He's got he a was business. already he's got in a VIP. Today, after his rap career failed, because I saw that his rap career is going nowhere, let me give him something uh, that he can actually why do. Why must you use this type of language? Okay. Slicker was a member of Squatter Camp. <laughs> Squatter Camp is I'm one of the... I'm not saying break no, it no, down. No, I, I'm not, it's not the language. It's, it's the facts of the matter. Okay. So Squatter Camp is one of the biggest groups, seminal group in South African hip-hop. Slicker himself... Mm. It's probably one of the wackest rappers in Swat <laughs> Like, in public opinion, there's no one who said... In public opinion. Oh, there's no. no one who said Slicker is my favorite um, uh, Squat Camp People like member. Slicker. People like him, yes, but they're not saying he's their favorite rapper from the group. The, it, me liking you. I, I, I like you, yes. You're a nice guy. 
I can see you're dating a, a TV star and everything else. So <laughs> you're now you're part <laughs> of a power couple. You're dating a TV star. I mean, <laughs> you're part of a power, power couple. So that obviously adds to <laughs> your own Yo, your shui. Your own shui. You're doing the PR <laughs> game and everything else. But we know that, nah. dog, when you, we, we put you beside Flabba, I wins next. Dog, when you put him beside Boza. I wins next. And there's some lines by Boza where you're like, nah, B. You know what I mean? Why did you No, there are lines by Boza where you're like, nah, B. You know what I Flabba has been flawless the whole time. Every single boss okay. fed by Flabba. Rest in peace with Flabba. I think that's probably the only person I've, show, I've seen you show full respect. Do you know how much respect that man showed me? Oh, yeah. He's always seen you. From the, t- the first time I met him, I met Shlaba when I was 16 years old. I was there to drop off a beat I'd made for Sugar Smacks' first solo single. Mm-hmm. And he was the guy at the studio. And I had to deliver the sets and everything else. And I color coded them. And he's like, Oh, where do you learn this color coded thing from? You got it from, uh, from Amu. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Nah, it's Cubase. You can color code your shit. So I just color coded it. So he acknowledged you. Dog. He always treated me like. As a human. You understand? Yeah. Like a. Whereas we're in the same office environment and Flava would tell Slick all the time that, yo, nigga, you think you're smart, but this little nigga is smarter than you. This little uh, motherfucker <laughs> is telling you how to run your business. He's actually running your business for you. And all the value of everything that's been created I've is coming from this I've heard you say nigga. that. I've it's, that's the fact of the matter. Oh. You're not the only one So you're heard. saying Flava. You've heard me say this. This is what Flava said to Slicker. In his face, in the office. And Slicker did not like that. How can you tell a kid that's in our office that, that he's is, smarter that than me? One. Mm. The thing is this, for him, he's got the arrogance where I always knew that I was the one. <laughs> I came to you because I'm the one. I'm like, you're, you're sleeping on your business. Your, your business is not going to go anywhere because you're doing it the wrong way. Let me show you how to do it the right way. I didn't mm. come there to learn from him. I came there to teach him. So I've had a pod with uh, Slicker, and he did say that your uh-huh. gift Relax. Nah. I don't want to hear what he said about me. No, dog. he said your gift. I'm no, talking. He said good he, things. No, it, that nigga's a bitch. I'm saying he, he's a bitch, dog. I don't want to hear what a bitch said about me. Now I must care what a bitch said about me. Now I must pretend as if like I care. Nah, that nigga's why, a bitch. Why? Why now? Nah, dog. How did he even talk about me? The nigga is 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 sending lawsuits to my house, dog. What are you doing talk. to him, dog? I'm not the one who said he must keep quiet because niggas were smacking up his ex. I'm not the one who said he must keep quiet. You understand what I'm saying? He's the one who decided to keep quiet. He's the one who decided to be a bitch nigga. And then after being a bitch uh, nigga... No let me tell you how he was a bitch nigga, dog. The same way you and I are sitting like this, dog. We're sitting like this. We've got Stella Artois that's sponsoring a thing. We're doing a TV show. And you're sitting across from the nigga that smacked your, your, your bitch. Because we know her as your bitch. So the nigga smacked your bitch. And the nigga that's... Um, got your so-called best friend's girl pregnant. Mm. You're sitting across from them, dog. I, sh- I don't really want to talk about other people's no, lives. No, but like no, it's that. not about talking about uh, lives, dog. It's about talking about respect as a bitch. That's why I'm saying he's a bitch. Because Zinger, if I see you sitting next to a nigga that smacked one of your bitches <laughs> and, a, and a nigga that, that, uh, that impregnated, let's say, a- a- exes, hun, mm. from the past... Yeah, yeah. If you're sitting with them, <laughs> as a nigga that knows y'all, I feel you. I feel. It's I'm like it's it. like ah, oh, and, and you're breaking bread with I'm these niggas. I'm not agreeing to what he's saying. No, no, I but just I'm just saying. The analogy is all you I'm saying. saying. No, I'm just saying like ah, nah, B. I can't respect you. I hear you. I, I, I can't respect you. I hear you all the time. I, I usually hear what you're saying behind all the brash. I can't respect. You. Why do you choose to- brash though? As a, as you're, a gonna, you're gonna sit next to Stogie T. You've never invited me to your shit ass show. Right? <laughs> you're gonna talk about me on your show, you haven't given me a right of reply. No, I'm just saying, you're, you're a media person now. Yeah. You need to understand that you haven't given me a right of reply. Who? Slicker. You yes. talked about me. You invited people to talk about but me. But did he on deny your show. you a right of reply? Yes! Why hasn't he. I, 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 Wait, but he, did you I say, yo, yes. I need to I come said, there. I, I commented on the same post and he mm. commented black, he replied. He said what? He said he's gonna hit me up. And then? I'm waiting for the hit up, dog. His number is 083. Oh, like, hold up, family. You, you, can, you can meet that. Maraza is on it. You understand? But I'm just saying. Yeah. I know his number for heart. You understand? He knows my number too. He's got my number. 
Mm. So he can talk about me, but he can't talk to me. He can't call me. That's a bitch. Ish. That's a bitch. And after everything I've done for him, he should be singing my praises everywhere. <laughs> after everything you've done for I him? I mean, he's got nothing without anything that I've done. Without my what? presentation. Okay, what is Slicker without Slicker on life right now? What do you it's mean? It's his dad's uh, taxi company and transport company. That's it. As a, uh, that's, that's all he has. Okay, I'm sorry I brought up Slicker. Let's talk no, about... No, but I'm just saying. It's like <laughs> you, you, you brought it up, but you, you, yeah. got, you got to see it from my perspective. I was as trying well. to give you a, you, no, a you're compliment. Bringing me here. You're bringing me here so that I you can get my perspective. I give you a compliment that he gave you, which was nah, in line nah, with dog. what you were nah, saying dog. about he, yourself. Dog. He I, gave you that depth he, of he, being no, somebody he who's said a something fixer. Which, uh, hold on. He said something which I've already said, which he never acknowledged prior to me saying it. He's only acknowledging it now because I've got a platform bigger than his. Because when I got into YouTube, when I get onto fucking YouTube, anything that has me on it, it doesn't matter if you've got... 30 subscribers on your page, it'll have more views than Slick on Life's shit. I doubt that's the only reason why he's saying it. He's acknowledging no. that it's true. He has to acknowledge it's true because <laughs> either way, if he doesn't acknowledge it's true, he looks so like a So you're giving him no respect for that? No, you can't come uh, belatedly after the fact. <laughs> belatedly. belatedly, wow. Belatedly. So he was belatedly. too tardy for you. It's not that he was too tardy, dog. What? The nigga didn't even... Dog, I Do organized you, Should deals. I pour you some juice? Uh, no, thanks. It's got, well, more it's water? Got sugar. Yeah, more water. Okay. Yeah, so it's sugar. I try to stay away from no even sugar though I'm at all. this sugar-free gram. Hopefully. <laughs> it's Wrigley's. Okay. Um, so he didn't pay me, dog, for the work that I did. You what that? work? For the work that I did. Oh, work, in the camp- any other campaign work, any of the shit that I did. He didn't pay me for the shit. Let me tell you what happened At one all? day. Let me tell you what happened one day. One day my E walks into the offices. Mm. He comes, he, he gives he, to show me the party 101 video. Okay. Ask me why my E is showing me the party 101 video. Why is it Because showing? I organize sponsors for the video. I organize a company called Wheel Nuts, which is when Dukes are shot his scenes on the video. What? Wheel Nuts. Okay. It's a company that does mags. Okay. Mag wheels, and they sponsored the video. They gave 40,000 rands to for the video for the video for party 101. For party 101, okay, yeah, and so I organized the sponsorship for that. shit. I put, Are you put shitting yes. me? Yeah, that's the truth. That's when they started going crazy with the visuals. I know, I know, okay, thank you. That's the thing. When I say I fathered the game, <laughs> okay, I'm not just saying it. So, okay, you understand? Shit. Your okay. know me, so, no. so watch your mouth. <laughs> no, for real, no, yeah, for real. <laughs> I, I've had this convo with KO himself, so so you watch your mouth, so. So, my E comes to the ventilation offices yeah. to show me the video because now it's done, it's edited. <laughs> yeah. And then he says, okay, please put this on ventilation.coza. For your help on the video, you guys can have the exclusive before we put it up on YouTube. Mm. So, you're saying my E also was a real nigga, he gave you recognition. He came. Yeah, he came to the office to come see me because he knew the, the role that I play. My E does go down in history as one of the realest ones. You understand what I'm saying? So, my E comes to me. When he comes to me, dog... Slicker doesn't want us to post this thing up on the thing which is, ah, yeah, yeah, I guess that. And I'm thinking to myself, but Which makes on. sense for him, No, it him doesn't. Though. You're not squatter camp. You have ventilation at Corsa now. <laughs> so you're saying you couldn't see I'm, the I'm, business? No, I'm just saying, but guess what a motherfucker did? How I did put it on, on the Facebook page. You didn't say anything about the Facebook page. Okay. And there, I have free ambit. It's the social media pages. <laughs> So I posted it up, it blew up. It was one of like the most popular videos that was posted on the ventilation. Which he Facebook couldn't page. have seen as a good thing. He couldn't thing. deny. He couldn't deny it. He couldn't have seen it as a good thing though. How could he not see it as a good thing? Because at the end of the day, it brought subscribers, viewers to the page. Which is the same page that he converted to Slicker on Life. He still was seeing them as competitors. That's stupid. You're not... You know, <laughs> watch your mouth. It is stupid. I'm, I don't need to watch my mouth. That's stupid because you're you are saying, no, we're an online platform and now you're competing with these people, which means you're disingenuous, which mm. means you're lying. Yeah, I don't and I'm not here for the lie. I'm here for the truth. Mm. You understand? And if you've got me here and working, you work by my integrity because I work by my integrity. Mm. I don't care who the fuck you are because oh. I can't be bought. Okay. I can go to my fucking dad's house, dog. Mm. And chill there and be good. And my dad will take care of me. I don't need none of this You're shit. You're nice. Yeah, you don't no, need this not, shit. it's not about that. It's that way no, it comes from. No, it's not about being nice. That's the thing, is that people make that mentality. I don't need much. That's kind of what that you nice. say. No, no. So what think, you say? People think that, okay, it means if you go back to your dad's, it means you're going back to a mansion, you're rich, whatever. No, mm. dog. 
Mm. Even if my dad was in a fucking shack, yeah. I'd go back to his. At the end of the day. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? I hear you. So I hear you. what I'm trying to say is that the, the mentality of people is that, oh, you're so attached to this apartment that you're renting for 10000 a month. You're so attached to this car that you're paying 15000 rand a month for. You're so attached to all those things that if mm. anything threatens that, mm. you're willing to sacrifice your integrity to, to maintain To hold it. on to it all. Yes. Nah, I'm not. Yes, I, I respect that. I respect and that opinion because I move the same way. Th- that's it. So for me, it was all about integrity. And the nigga didn't show integrity. Now, he's in a leadership position in our organization where we are all working for the organization. Okay, goals. wait. Let me hear you right. So you're looking at him as a nigga. You don't have the filter of slicker. And you're just looking at him as a man and in this position of power and him not playing the right play. Yeah, I, to, to me, there's no such thing as a celebrity. I, I don't get starstruck. The only time I've actually been starstruck is when mm. uh, I was supposed to shake hands with Messi and I didn't, I froze. Shake hands? Yeah, yeah, like he was walking past the tunnel. Or shake hands? Yeah, with Messi, yeah. And I froze. I was standing with Pepper and he shook hands with me and I just <laughs> froze. So I just ended up shaking hands with Iniesta because that was the next best thing. That's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll settle for Iniesta. <laughs> For me, it's not even about the shaking hands. It's uh, yo, the man made me suffer. Yeah, he made you suffer. <laughs> like, wait, I, where I, was this now? At the tunnel, at the game. Which game? The Sundowns versus Barcelona game. Oh, okay. So, so after the game, you were one of the little the boys that were shaking hands. No, what no, happened? I'm a grown man. <laughs> when is this? <laughs> when they're going into the change room, I was waiting outside the Barcelona change room. How are you at the Barcelona change room? Because I'm that guy. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm that guy, I'm but... sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I met the boss in the change room. And <laughs> he has Messi, now he has a man. And he's first in line, dog. He's the first nigga. Mm. And I just suffered. I was like, yo, I can't believe this. Oh, you couldn't reach, you couldn't put your hand no, down. The nigga's walking directly <laughs> to me. But I'm merely him young, but mm. he has to walk past me, dog. Did you like, at least do the eye contact? Dog. I at froze, least. dog. I froze to the point where Pepper, who's standing here next to me, reached out. He jumped for him. He's like, what's wrong with this nigga? <laughs> He's shocked. He's like, hold on, nigga. We came Smells, down here yeah. to holler at this nigga. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And then you get to the nigga and then all of a sudden you're starstruck. So that's the only time I've ever been starstruck. I understand but that. When it comes to like uh, being starstruck, uh, I watched Squatter Camp performing when I was 13 years old. When mm. they performed at um, um, Keep To Be Free. Mm. Um, um, Hip hop concert at Parktown Boys in 2003. And I got backstage there because my cousin was also there, <laughs> Specs. So I've always been in the game from that um, perspective, as in like I had a bigger brother who was there. I went to Horror Cafe when I was a teenager. Okay, you've and I saw always these niggas seen it, yeah. So I, when I met Amu, and from the when, I met Amu when I met Amu, he was Brian at my aunt's house as one of the bigger brothers. Yeah, it would be, he, he was an Amu. He, he was. Oh, but he was Brian. But I, I yeah. was a kid at the time. Yeah, yeah but either way. I hear you, I hear you. I my, hear what you're saying. It's my big brother's friends. Yeah, it's just my big brother's boy. Oh, you understand? Yeah. That's, you understand? Yeah. Flubber used to come to my school as well. High school. Elias used to pick me up from school. I did his album launch party when I was in matric, I think, as well. So all of these niggas that were in the game, I knew them like this. Mm. You understand? And you knew them on a, on a human level. On a human level. So mm. from uh, me trying to assist Slicker, and him not understanding the leadership position that he's in and treating it as such, mm. being part superstar, part businessman, mm. mm-hmm. is what messed up my respect for him. I couldn't respect him beyond that point because he didn't see that actually, I'm actually supposed to be a businessman. I'm actually supposed to be a business leader. Six gun, don't get it twisted. <laughs> I hope they pay. So, <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, where, where are they from? I don't know, but they did. Tell us the story you're no, telling. No, 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 I just want to see where, where they made it. Because now you're promoting oh, them Crown for National. real. So it's local. Yeah, so, mm. you know. But it's lit, though. They go crazy. I know. Mm. Easy. So, I mean, th- that just made me just lose all respect. And absolutely all of it. All of it. Dog, dog. Slick is business partners with Smacks. Mm. You'll never hear me be disrespectful to Smacks. Because Smacks showed me nothing but respect. Let me Mm. tell you something. Smacks is probably the richest nigger in all of hip-hop. In all of hip-hop? Dog, Smacks' dad used to own mines in Sierra Leone, diamond mines. Smacks' dad had, like, the first black-owned insurance company. You see where the Reef Hotel is? That used to be their fucking building. 
Mm. You understand what I'm saying? That nigga used to own investment cars. Now, mm-hmm. back in the day, investment cars didn't exist for any of y'all watching now. But back in the mm-hmm. day, investment cars was where you'd see all the big cars. So Smacks is dead. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Now, Smacks, as a nigga that comes from everything, dog, everything. Una Yonkinto, he's been a child star. He was acting with Ustumo, dog. As Uchali. On his goodest night, he's been on those Dynamite Death of Dudes. Those are serious yeah, strides. Smacks. Those are serious Now, tribes. if that guy is humble and treats you with respect, and mm. yet his less accomplished partner <laughs> that cannot respect you, wow. that just shows you the caliber of the two human beings. I'm just saying. I hear you. Yeah, you'll never hear it's anybody ever in the game say ever say anything disrespectful about Smacks. And don't. Mm. Yeah. Because there's no need to. And also... So the you don't want that smoke. so the Ma'i line from Ricky, rest That's in the peace, thing. Ricky. I, but I confronted Didn't Ricky about that line. Didn't appreciate it. I confronted Ricky about that line. Mm. I said the thing is this, Ricky. A lot you know? of us in the game didn't appreciate. Yeah, that and he apologized line. for it. But yeah. he he apologized for it, and he took it back when he spoke to Slicker. But did you see Slicker's response in that interview? He didn't. What was he it? didn't be. He he wasn't an OG, a hot man to say, yo, how can you say that about? An OG, how are the kids supposed to look up to us? And now, Ricky doesn't even make it to 34. Or oh, he makes oh, it, ju- he wait. only just makes it to 34. Wait, wait, wait. You said, I don't want to be in my E at 43. And then you take your life at 34. It, it, it correlates. Is there a causal link? Maybe. You understand? So... You want to lead oh. the game by example, yeah, by deep. saying, I don't want to fall off like I think Ma'i has fallen off. Because you think Ma'i has fallen off. You don't want to ever fall off. So for you to never fall off, you need to get to the top of the game and kill yourself so you can die at the top of the game. That's the most childish, cowardice thing. Why? Because you don't want to beat 43 and Ma'i. And wow. kids watch that as an example, and they're supposed to glorify that. That's a dog. Like wow. for me, it's, it's that real. I even had a, a chat with Bianca about it because wow. she was like yo i saw something you said i was like yeah dog i'm not gonna allow these white folks to use my nigga's name to make money and at the end you got everybody coming up here the cotton fest lineup nobody being paid a cent it's a tribute to our nigga you know what i mean who took his own life that was supposed to be a sandwich oh, thank but you. he doesn't eat bread yeah guy. but also yo, the 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 thing uh, white bread it, it'll give me piles sorry yes sir It'll give me piles, so mm-hmm. I'm not trying to have hey. that. So, thank you. Mm. So, you know, again, we don't have any credibility. So when something like that happens, you're expecting the OGs of the game to be there to give to guidance and everything up. else. Where's Slicker? He's a, he's a cocksucker. Okay, but not only he's Slicker. He's not an OG. None, no, I'm just saying none of them said anything. Mm-mm. He's the one with the media platform. He's the guy that put himself out there as the media platform for the culture, right? Out of all the OGs. Am I in frame in my shit? You know, you can't, you, you can't complain about KO because KO is rapping. Oh, he's, he's rapping. Active. He's, he's active. active. He's an active rapper. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Can't it's make, different. Can't make statements. You understand? I feel you. You can't, you, you understand? I, okay. So in that role, who do we have? We have Slicker. And he's the worst person for that and role. And he's the one sitting with He's him. the most irresponsible. No. <laughs> He's the most irresponsible because the same thing is like, he's not going to say anything when they smack up his bitch. So how is he going to say something about this shit? You understand? He chose his side. He chose to take the side of injustice and silence instead of being responsible. Instead of being Kanye on any level inspire you to talk this way? Pop Daddy inspired me. I always said, talk in my first this interview, way? in my first interview, mm-mm. that's the thing. I'm that talking people, about to talk I'm inspired way. by Puff Daddy. Kanye is inspired by Puff Daddy. So it makes sense that Kanye and I are similar because we're inspired by the same person. Okay. Ooh, okay. I hear that. I hear that. That's it. I knew as a kid that I was going to grow up to be Puff Daddy. I said that in my first ever interview. I was mm-hmm. eight years old when I did that interview. Mm-hmm. I said that in my first ever interview. You know? So for me to... Host parties, uh-huh. host events while I was in high school was just me doing my Puff Daddy thing. For me to, <laughs> to run a record label oh, so you were just was me doing my Puff Daddy thing. Yeah. Everything I've ever done has been my Puff Daddy thing. Even now, yeah. I'm getting into podcasting and online media broadcasting. 
It's your puff. It's my revolt stage. I'm at my revolt stage. Okay. I'm at, uh, you know, I'm still I think I'm also at my revolt stage. Yeah, yeah. I'm skipping a, a whole lot of steps, but I'm. I can go. Ah, no, no, no. You I can't, can't say you're skipping a whole lot of steps. You, you've done the steps. I've a put, lot of people I've put in my ten thousand. A lot of people want people to repeat things. They're like, "Oh man, you did this. If can you, you could do, it do again? that again, yeah." I'm like, I realized why would I, do I that? wanted to do it again, and then I stopped myself. Like, I snapped myself out of it. I was like. You're doing it what, for them. What if you're yeah, doing it again, I realize you're doing I'm it for trying them. to do it for them. I was like, what, what do I have to prove? I don't have to prove nothing. I already nothing. did this shit. The reason <laughs> y'all can do this shit is because I did this shit. You understand? Yeah. Now, that's the whole entire point. So. Yeah, I do. And maybe I do understand most of the things you say because I myself am a dad in this game as well. Mm, that's the thing. <laughs> and as a dad in the game, if you're taking offense, it means you feel inadequate. I mean, you feel, Ooh. I'm not doing enough. This nigga's upstaging me. It's like when there's a hot bitch here at the table. And now we have to fight amongst each other to see who's going to make her laugh more. Oh, the niggas that try and become a bit funky just because. When there's bitches around. Just because there's bitch, women around. Can we say women? No. Nah. Nah. <laughs> women don't incite such behavior. When there's women around, the, the behavior is different. <laughs> Why do you always have an answer? It's only when there's bitches around. <laughs> Seriously. Bitches. That's why. Because like, the bitches make me the same. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. So, I mean, I'm like, ah. I know how niggas are going to behave when there's bitches around. Okay, but not saying bitches have never made you shake before ever in your life. Maybe, they have. Maybe you've they grown have. out of it. Exactly. I have. Give us some honesty. Okay, so give us some vulnerability. No. Tell us about bitches making you shake. No, I, I, a bit. I, I, give us nah, a story. Like obviously, like in my earlier years. Give me a story when you trembled a bit and you're like you couldn't believe yourself. Nah. Who would say, yo, this is nah. me like this? Nah. Look, I'll put it to you like this. You're a single guy. I'm a married man. So there's no amount Wait, of what. Yeah, uh, 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 let me finish. <laughs> There's no amount of trembling yes. that I ever did as a single guy that amounts to the responsibility I have as a married man. So anything that I've experienced in the past is nothing it's compared nothing to compared the challenges to where you are of now? a lifelong commitment. Okay, so speak on that. Let me, let me put it to you like this. Mm. Anytime I was dating someone, if I didn't appreciate what they're doing or whatever, I could just find someone else. Okay. When you're married, dog, you have to go through it together. We've gone through like probably the toughest couple of years in any person who's a, a, a creator or entertainer's career. Mm. You know, and that affects people. Oh, you different. mean financially? No, well, not for me. <laughs> but um, wow, I what? hear you though. I no, no, I'm saying no, like I personally, like I personally, I structured my life so that my yes, finances don't depend you. on how many people I can gather in a room. I hear you. Um. I hear you. Mm-hmm. But yes, so the effects of you understand yes. when you're in a partnership, it affects you understand, and because yeah. things change, it's not it, it, a lot. Yeah, uh, and, and yeah. you have to be there with someone. And yeah, if yeah. someone is going through something, you have to sit there. I with can't them. be like, I, you know what? It's you very easy. But it's very easy to go to sumo dog and pull up something and pop a couple bottles and entertain myself and pleasure myself with mm. something. Mm. That someone had last week it doesn't take or a, a couple lot. hours prior. It doesn't, it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot. So now when you've got the commitment of being married and in a relationship, Shit. yeah, it's a different level of vulnerability. That level of vulnerability to, to be vulnerable enough to say in sickness and in health, for richer or poor, for better or worse, until death do us part, that is the highest level of vulnerability. And I it accepted is. that vulnerability. It is. I respect that because I feel like as though I'm, I'm almost prepared to commit on that level. But uh, really? On, hold on, man. <laughs> but, no, but, I'm just saying. But speak on it. Like, what is, what's that like? The challenge? Because it's crazy. Mm, the it challenge is. is to sit there and have to understand, like, empathize. It is. And um, I have to thank my dad because, you know, I got to see my dad do it. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother's an orphan, which means that she, um, from the age of five, she had no parents. That's when my grandmother died in 1963. So 
<laughs> just observing my mother's behavior as a child, like Ooh. from the point as yo, you played yourself. Look at this. Yo, yeah, no, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks good. It looks and good. I I it's wanted nice. to treat you well. No, no, no. Like, trust me. Fine. Like, you see, the, the, the pleasure that you have mm. on your lips and digesting that mm. does not amount to the pain that it will have after digesting that. Sorry. That I would have. Talk about other and it's people. From the years Talk about of, other people. No, it's, it's the years of being on the road and eating unhealthily mm. and everything mm. is taking its mm. toll on me. Like, when I really got sick for the first time, I was actually in New York and I had no medical aid. I had nothing. I had no one that I knew. I called my mother and she said, well, there's good hospitals there. It's the United States, isn't it? Ooh. And I was like... Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I, I'm out on the streets, out there. I got nobody that I know. And my mother's like, no, they've got good hospitals there. I'm sure you should be fine. I'm thinking to myself, I'm dying. <laughs> you know? Um, so mm. observing my mother and my father's relationship with my mother, mm. there was a lot of times I'm like, Dude, <laughs> like, why do you put up with this? <laughs> I can't believe you didn't say anything about my wages. No, they were nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, everything was nice. So I'm like, sometimes I would sit and listen to my parents' arguments. Mm. And I'd see that, okay, my mother, her abandonment or fear of abandonment has made her have Certain personality traits that I just... You don't mind talking about your mother's business like that? No, no. We, we, we're going through therapy and everything else. Like, yeah. So, but you, even, but I'm talking about my dad. You don't mind no, I, I'm not talking about it personally. My mother had uh, what they call... Um, I'll, I'll get into it. Okay. I'll get into it. Mm. But just observing their behavior. Mm. Be like, you know? Then I had to understand that, okay, sh- sh- she comes from a, a background where... Sh- Yes, in African culture, we don't have orphans, but every child wants to have their own parents that feel like they're their favorite child or whatever. My mother never had that. You understand? And Mm. she only found out that she was an orphan through hearsay when she was like a teenager through someone who was speaking about her mother, saying, oh, Oh, my goodness. Mm. That's how she heard it. My mother's dead. So all this time they've been telling me my mother's overseas and everything else. Um, And my grandmother died because she was a singer and um, she had a thyroid problem and um, she had an operation and because she was anemic she didn't have enough iron in her blood so when she bled she bled out Mm. and then that's why she she died you know Mm. Uh, that's why she died Mm. Um, her name is Aurelia Nomaz so rest in peace yeah so I I, I needed to learn to understand that. I needed to have mm. like high emotional intelligence. And mm-hmm. also, when I was four years have old... Have you always had it young? Yeah. So when I was four years Were old... Were you like born with it? Yeah. That young? Yeah. I, I, I'm what they call like... You know, they call like, people baby geniuses and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So I was identified young. So from four years old, I was already scoring off the charts uh, when it comes to IQ tests. Okay. And... Um, That's fire. Oh, no, I never respected that growing up because I was I felt like I was cool, but thinking about it now, now that I've changed into uh. into my intellect, it's like, oh, that's actually respectable to have been active in that from that young. Yeah, and I'd always been. And but I mm. never knew why. But it was my protecting my mother. Because I always felt like I needed to take care of my mother. Even as a child. Mm. Like um, now that you're there, let me when I was twelve years old. Um, I learned how to drive. My uncle, my mother's younger brother, taught me how mm. to drive. And yeah, earlier yeah. you said I've been driving for 20 years. Yeah, since 2002. So, we hear you. Um, so, when he taught me how to drive, the reason he taught me how to drive was so that I could be there with my mother when she's driving. Because mm. she had recently learned how to drive. Mm. And I needed to learn the skill to protect my mother. Immediately after I started learning how to drive, I started driving In my mother. Case anything happened? Everywhere. No, I started driving my mother everywhere. Like, I started, I'm only now on reflecting on it, mm. learning. I'm gaining the wisdom from reflecting on my past life. Mm. And, um, and um, what gave me the resilience and, and role modeled the role that I need to play as a husband and everything else is my mm. father. Because at any point in time, 
Like when I was thinking my mother's wiling out and she's behaving differently and everything yeah. else, where I couldn't see that, okay, maybe she's got certain issues from her childhood trauma, from growing up with her, her father yeah, yeah. being uh, her Before mother you and gain, father. Before you gain that perspective. She's got other siblings that yeah. were raised by their father. So she was the unfavored child or whatever. She had all of those things. So it gives her a, a sense of insecurity. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, where she feels like if she doesn't control you, you'll abandon her. Mm. Mm, so she'll mm. try and figure out a way mm-hmm. to put you under her control. But as a mother, it makes sense when a mother is trying to control you because she's your mother, right? Mm. But you're not seeing that. Actually, but you can't trauma see response. where it's coming from, yeah. It, it, when, only when you're an adult, you challenge it. You're like, yeah. hold on, I'm an Hold's adult. Away, you can't. Yeah, relax. Yeah. Mm. So now... Only now do you see that it's a problem. That, that, and I reflect on it. Because as a kid, you feel like, okay, she was doing that she's to my mom. Mm. Who's not? Who's child. not a kid, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yo, I'm not your kid. You're and, not going to... You do, you do this you're to not everybody. Gonna, yeah. And I was like, but Pops, why do you just allow this? I hear this? you. I hear you because I've seen that in, in my parents because I, I came from... But my parents didn't stay together. Uh. Yeah, so I saw it actually fall apart all the way. Uh. So I can relate to that. Like seeing the... And, it's then, and then seeing that, oh, it's because when I... And then growing up to realize... When are you expect to treat everybody like this? Mm. That's why you like it. It becomes yeah, it's you you're like this. You're mm. like this. You understand? So that's what it, it it took a while, and then I had to then figure out how do I then build the relationship, and that took us having to go to the family therapy and everything else, you know, mm-hmm. because that was the only intervention. Because in her mind, who suggested she's the mother. therapy? Um, myself and my sister. I, I I spoke to my sister about it and said, Yo. when. It's the beginning of this year. Okay. Yeah. So, but the reflecting on it and understanding this mm, whole entire mm. thing has been something that's been a process. That's a process. Mm. I, I, I know. Yeah. So that's, I've got into that. So that's when I started years seeing, of work. So when I started seeing certain behaviors within my own relationships and I said, I'd always ask myself, what would my dad do? Because you prefer his response? Because I've seen his response and how it kept which is why I asked our family so his response. Yes, yes, I response. want to keep a fa- I want a family. I want to, you understand? But another thing that I also didn't want to I do is that, that, that's that I learned from my parents is that my parents didn't deal with their childhood traumas before they had kids. A lot of our parents. Yes, but I, I'm, I can only observe my parents. Of course. So, I'm sorry and judge to my include parents. Us. No, no, no. no <laughs> not to say that. It, 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 when you include, what I'm about Absolutely. to say next is going to be very scathing. <laughs> I don't want to be scathing other people's families. <laughs> okay, I hear you. Okay. You want to keep it to yourself? Yeah. Let me scathe my family. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay, okay. <laughs> I respect so it. So I noticed that and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to put myself in a situation where myself and the mother of my children have not fully dealt with mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. whatever Who issues. we are. You this, understand? Yeah. So, and also... Wait, because you don't want to give it to the kids? Are you trying to protect the kids or just in general? For both of you? Well, you see... Because you guys don't have kids yet. No? Yes. Mm. I don't have kids yet. Mm. So... So, so, so <clears throat> it was an observation based on my relationship with my siblings. Okay. Saying that because of how we're raised, mm-hmm. right? When I left home and I started going on the road with y'all niggas, mm-hmm. I was actually leaving home because I wanted my parents to be able to focus on my little brother, who I felt needed additional attention. Now, wow. because of the way my mother was raised and everything else, you know, she thought that you need to be manipulative to get what you need. Mm, you have to manipulate it out of people. Like, you understand? So, hey, we pay I a lot of money for that. your school fees. Appreciate mm. it. You understand? Mm, hey, mm. you're going to take you out of That's this good a school. A lot you're of black private. people but the thing is this. speak that way. I know. It's terrible. But And I think it's because we're raised but that way. I'm the child who is at the school because the school wants me there and therefore I don't have to pay fees. So you are denying me. Oh, so I me. can't relate. No, no, no. I, I'm Is saying, you're saying? You, you are denying no, I'm me. I'm saying you. That's how you feel. I no, can't I, it's relate. It's not that I can't relate. You're lying to me. You're telling me I'm inadequate. You're telling me that this opportunity that okay, I have you're... is bankrupting you. Mm. You're telling me that you can't do the things that you want to do for your life. And I'm stealing that from you as mm. a child. You understand? Because that's what a lot of mothers do to their children. Mm. They're like, you mm. stole my this. You stole my this. Do you this. think they you realize that? They don't realize it. Mm. You understand? Yeah, because they don't. So it takes a, a level of they maturity. Don't. It, it takes a level of maturity to, to get to that point. You know? So, Sweet 
looking back at it, I'm thinking to myself, and if I were to generalize it, I'd mm. be like, if we look at the history of our country, mm. black women like, are not cut out to be mothers because of the history of our country. Black men are not cut out you to be to the head of households so because of the history the of our country. And the reason why is because oh, I hear when you. you're... F- I hear you. You understand? I hear you. So at the yeah. end of the day, your if dad you was a tough guy history. when he got into the house. Mm. As soon as he left the house, a white man could slap him across the face and he'd be able to do nothing about mm. it. Mm. Mm. You could watch your dad getting slapped on the face mm. by a white man. Mm. And you'd go home. And have to and act like nothing happened. happened. Your hero mm. just got defeated. And then now you, in you, front as, a child, of your eyes, you yeah. as a child know that this nigga cannot protect me from the white man. Mm. Yeah. Now you're wondering whether you should respect him. Well, this man actually... So now... Fuck him. Because you might take offense. What the fuck? So how can your mother respect him? Mm. Mm. You understand? Mm. And then now, if mothers are not respecting fathers they're not able to then raise their children to respect their father, which is the role of a mother. Mm, mm. The mother is supposed to teach them you how to... to respect that. Mm. You understand? But yeah. Okay, you don't understand how to talk to that man. Listen, I'll talk to him for you. Trust me, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. you understand? But, you know, because, mm. hey, that man is very busy. He's, mm. very, he's very difficult. You understand? So my mother couldn't do you've, that role. You've done a lot. You've I've done, done a lot, a lot of, of work. So instead of my mother doing that role, mm. she'd say, okay, how can I circumvent your father? To give you what you want. <laughs> because she's like, I want to be the favorite parent. Circumvent. <laughs> yes. Yes, manipulative. <laughs> and why? <laughs> why? 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 Because the father has said, no, kids are not shopping. Then mm. we don't have the money to buy clothes. God. Now you take us shopping and then you make us hide all the clothes and everything else so that dad doesn't see. You're mm. teaching us to lie to our father, to disrespect our father and all those mm. things. To not go by his law. And... And I'm the child that will always say, we went And shopping. also you gain the favorite parent in the meanwhile. In the meanwhile. You're competing, you're competing against the nigga that's providing a roof You're competing your against your... <laughs> ah, you filthy. You filthy. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've seen the filth in women and it's scary. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? It's, and they don't see and that. And it's hereditary. You yeah, understand? They hereditary. don't see that. And I'm like, the only reason I accept this behavior is because you're my mother. Mm, it's like only okay because you... you're my mother. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you were any other woman, I'd be cussing you out. I'd be telling you, fuck that. <laughs> you yeah, only yeah, fuck so, that. I never saw my dad seek retaliation or revenge or. Ooh, he always kept his composure. Just kept shout his cool. Out, shout out to your dad. Shout you know what I mean? Shout dad. out to pops. Shout yeah, out to pops. Shout out to so your yeah. Dad. So I saw him keep his composure when you were going crazy in Cape Town. On live. Uh, I'm I was like, going crazy. They dad. were disrespecting. Yes, I mean, mm. I'm, I'm talking, I'm hip hop yeah. talking. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no sorry, disrespect. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> sorry. Just that we've got these psychology books and stuff like that. So, so you in the. So I don't know if you're making a diagnosis or. <laughs> <laughs> Too sure. I hear you, but I saw his composure in, in that instance because he sat there and allowed for what was taking place to take place and mm. didn't lose his own character mm. in that occurrence. Because it was my decision. Yeah, he... He respects my decision. Yeah, he, he gave you room. In That's the, my thing. So when my mom would while out in mm. the crib, <laughs> I'd see that man, <laughs> stoic as he is, being stoic. Crazy. This you step is for you, pops. You understand? So I watched that. So now I know that, okay, fine. When I take a wife... Great man. If ever... Mm. Something happens. We can't see each other. We can't see mm. eye to eye. Uh, sit. Don't engage. Mm. Just allow. Disengage, maybe. That's it. Yeah, maybe disengage. Yeah, disengage from the mm. situation. From the... Whatever. Mm. You from the noise, yeah. That's it. You're better off disengaging. That's it. You're way better off disengaging. That's it. That's Especially it. for... Just for your intelligence sake also. Oh. Because when you do engage, you, you realize that this has nothing to do with anything. Oh, you... Yeah, <laughs> it had nothing to do with you. Yeah, what the fuck? It, it I'm has so to do needy. with another man who is old enough to be your dad. Or, probably. or whatever. No, that's what it's about. Because remember I told you that the respect of the father mm. is something that's been taken out of the black household. Okay. So the black woman that you meet is a woman who's most likely disrespectful of her father. Ooh, yeah. I'm lucky because I have a, a girl who respected her father. You understand? Yeah. 
the likelihood of that Ooh, is very slim in your in relationships of dating in your in your career of dating slim. how many times have you had this occurrence this has and that's, the that's why i've why held on to it but that's the reason why you're ready to take a <laughs> further steps yes. because you're like okay if this one can respect her father it means that she can respect mm. me if i become her husband mm. and i've seen that respect too i've seen her practice that i've seen it in her it was okay that's i have it. my place here and you know but also then She's not afraid to tell me to, tell me to be respectable. Mm. Like, yo, exactly. but also... You are making yourself... Come on. How am I supposed to respect you if you are... You feel me? You understand you what I'm saying? Shape up also. Exactly. Mm. So, also, like, within the game, is like, you know, the game is not for play-play. Hey, man, I like how you talk. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> it, 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 like, people think it's a game. It's not a yeah, game, Yeah, it's, it's, it's not. War, it's, yeah... Yeah. It's war. Playing for keeps. You understand? Yeah. So I've got a family to protect. I've got everything to protect. Yo, and I'm as the soon head of as you also. get into that protective zone, a lot of shit changes about you because protection goes way further than mm. Ikarati. Protection is not Ikarati. It's no. like you have to protect. That yeah. means the foundation has yeah. to stand. That means like, I need to be able to see that, oh, now Baba Fana is. Mm. When they meet up with these boys, mm. they're going to come with some mischief and come and take my shit. Mm. Let me shoot these guys down. Clean. <laughs> Let me kill it from afar. <laughs> yeah. You understand? And across board. And let me let niggas know that that's how I go out here. You understand? <laughs> it be, you don't play it with no. Nota. It's not going to go like that. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Like, yeah. if, you're, if you're playing with Nota, you need to have your sh- lined up in a certain way. I was doing that when I went and put hands on Claro, respectfully. Yeah, respectfully. yeah, yeah. But either when way, when I went and put hands on him for talking like that to me on Twitter, because yeah. for me, I was like, yo, yeah, because also everybody participated and laughed. Uh. So I was like, yo, okay, I have I to let this man know that you're not gonna say that shit to mm. me. Like, no, you're not gonna that. say that to me and then walk around like nothing happened. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, I exactly. had to go put, but everybody on the industry level spoke about me like I was going, especially because no, Twitter was so to, small nah, at the time. It's not, not that. They were nah. hating. Nah. What? They were trying to destroy you. It you is, had their potential. They, yes. That's it's not, it's so that's hate? Number one. They've always hated Let, let me give you a, a, a something that we Speak on to. it. Uh. We're light skinned. Pressure. Pressure. We're hated for that. Pressure. You understand? Pressure. We're good looking. Pressure. We're hated hey, for that. Hey, talk understand? about it. Cheers. I, I, seriously. Hey. Like, you, you know you're good looking when you have to go through a stage where you have to make yourself look ugly. I saw you go through that stage. I went through the stage myself. <laughs> because you, you, the attention is just too much. It's like, wait, wait. I, now wait. I need to be ugly for you all to not look wait, at me. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah. What? And I said, like, growing my hair wild and all that type of shit. It's because I, I didn't want to be in the club. The fact that you said that like that and... Because that's literally what was happening. Yeah, that is it. I know. That's exactly. what I was doing. Yeah, I, I was hiding I, I, in plain sight. Yeah, I know. I, I, I was like, oh, like, oh, he's hiding. Nobody else could see that. No, like, oh, dog. I could see that. I'm like, oh, okay, this nigga's hiding. Cool. And that's You're my good. Thing. For, no, for me, it's commendable. You're good. You're you know, good. I was saying to someone about You're reading good. a book, I was like, you know, a lot of these You're guys good. don't understand that they, they're competing with niggas who observe their behavior and psychoanalyze them through their social media because they post about everything. And yeah. they post about actually what they're really thinking, what they're really going through. Yeah. Whereas some of us <laughs> yeah. can perform. We can yeah, put on yeah, yeah, I, can, yeah, yeah. I can put on the good authority. I can put on the authority. I can put on whatever character I decide. I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't call you the authority when no, I no, introduced no, you. No, the no, authority, no, ladies no, and no, gentlemen. It's good authority, please. It's good authority now. <laughs> please. So I can put on the character. So the psychoanalyzing of everyone mm. is something that I'm very good at. And it's important too. I've had to do that to be able to analyze the market that I was entering into because I was very far removed from the environment. So I grew up in the suburbs. Okay. Most people who are urban grow up in townships. Mm. So if I'm going to make music that's going mm. to reach out to a, a vast majority of our youth, it needs to resonate with the people that are in the township. Okay. So I need to understand it. So I even went to live in Katrahoe. You did do that. I lived there. I slept on a couch there. You did. It's an anthropology project. And you didn't project. have to. You didn't have to. I was nice. I could have been... I've heard you say this, and it only hit me when you said it, because <laughs> we were all on road. Yeah. 
<laughs> and we were all just living it, but you don't know what everybody's coming here with and from. Exactly. And it's like, yo, yeah, we're just going to be out here, we're fresh off the road, sleep on the couch, on the floor if we have to, or whatever, and we're going to wake up tomorrow. And You understand? And for some people, yeah, you really had to, because mm. it's not... For it's, me, I was just taking the 200 rand I was putting in my mom's Mercedes <clears throat> to get to and from Katlong and from Forest Oof. every day. So you could have just hit the pants. But, you understand? It's my mom's. But I'm going to do it with the niggas. You understand? And I need to be in the environment to actually see what's mm. going on, to see what's going down. I need to immerse in depth, myself. Yeah, into immerse the myself culture. into it mm. to actually understand it so that mm. I know that, okay, fine, when we're producing this product, I mm. now need to be the guy who's selling it. Okay. So I need to live it. So you are intentional about being a part of the lifestyle. Everything. For you to be able to... I orchestrated everything. Mm. The music itself, what we were going to speak about in the music, I orchestrated. You the were beats, directing niggas' this everything, conversation. Everything. Which, everything. Know, this is talk what we're talking about. about this, 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 this is the other side. These are the conversations mm. that we have. When we yeah. have a debate and an argument, it's because I know that. And this is true, guys. This is true. So, also, I also knew that. Now, for me, as a scientist, I was like, okay, fine. I also knew that it's very difficult to span the, the, the length and breadth of the country to find top-tier talent, right? Mm -hmm. Between Senzo, yourself, maybe I'll throw in a Maraza Kid as X. well. X. Mm. You can um, stop right there. No, Trill. Trill! Ooh, Trill, you yes, yes. When we look at that whole setup, yeah. remove Senzo from the picture, mm -hmm. right? Because he's the X that I'm working on. Yeah. I needed y'all niggas to shop in him. Yeah. I, I invited y'all niggas to come to the studio, you and X. Mm. I never heard niggas flow like that in my life. Ever in your life, nigga. You understand? And I yeah. only said that after you guys left the room. I said that to Senzo. I was like, yo, nigga, Ever in your whatever life. these niggas want, if they want lean, Senzo's I'll buy it. Senzo's flow changed after that. You understand? Yeah. If, if, if niggas want lean, I'll <laughs> buy it. If niggas want Nando's, I'll <laughs> buy it. Make <laughs> sure those niggas always come to the studio. Yo, watch out. Watch you out. <laughs> You're putting no, out the ingredients. No, no but, but they know. They know. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the history is documented. Really yeah, but documented. either way, yeah. so... We don't have that's facts. No, Quester being that shit. the number one rapper in the country without a zinger or smashes and a kid X no. next to him no, in don't. studio sharpening his sword. Yeah, we don't because those are the people that he shopped and Ginger Trill as and well. And Trill, yeah, he wasn't. He came in the building. No, but too. either way, it's not even about him coming in the building. The mere yeah. fact that we've got five his songs, existence. we've got five songs that we've done randomly together, and all yeah. of those songs are a competition about yeah. who's got the best verse. And of all course. The, each and every single time every you guys time. record, every you, time. Become, you come out sharper. <laughs> yeah, every time. You understand? Yeah. So, there was no chance in hell that you got Jada Kiss, you mm -hmm. got Fab, mm. <laughs> mm. you got Hove, you Nas. got all, yeah. all of them right here. Biggie. <laughs> you understand? Like, yeah. I knew that. Big L, ready to go it. crazy. I knew exactly mm. what was going on. So you could see it in that perspective. I could see it. Mm. Because Keenan also then tried to, well, did come uh. closer to that. He, he did. Yeah, he did. But he needed it. He, sp uh. he came and spent time in Brown. Uh. And he Everything. And then he got Yaga. Came, he and also then, came and it. immersed that in the it. culture. That was it. That yeah. was it. And then he got Chief. Okay, but assistant. also then, that means, speak on the fact that we were the culture because everybody had to come immerse with us. But that was the truth. Yeah, we are Everybody the culture. Uh -huh. I'm the slang, I'm the talk, I'm no, the swag, true. I'm the but, team. But I, I've been saying that. And the thing is this, is that a lot of... You've said that, you've documented I've said that. this. As, uh, yo, I've been saying, yo. Thank you. All this slang comes from Because they don't want to say it. I know, they don't, they'll never <laughs> they say it. They'll never give it. you a dab with you, yo, mm. this is everything. Dog, these niggas didn't drink lean before, yo. Nobody did. Nobody drank lean before, <laughs> yo. <laughs> yeah. You understand? Yeah, so, we, we, we take that back. Sorry, guys. We... That, yeah, was, that was a bad plug. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go to the gym now. Yeah, so yeah. it's observing that and knowing um, that, damn it, I've got the opportunity to work with some of the best talent. Now, it's not even about like rap or writing talent because yeah. for me, I don't see myself as any less of a rapper or a writer than anybody in the room. The only challenge I had was a linguistic one, whereas you guys know how to speak the language of the people that we're targeting. Whereas, okay. I know how to speak the language of business. Okay. So you had to make a choice. I had to make a choice. Am I going mm. to be the one who's speaking to the so people that we're like talking to? So it's like a player who grows up wanting to play ball, but then he... It's like, okay, 
The niggas who born we can win the championship. don't have the we can IQ. Win the championship so let me I'm the coach. coach. Yeah, let me coach. Yeah, okay. It's a player who realizes that, damn it, mm. I could be a, a great player, but, but if I coach... Even better coach, we're, we're making history. You understand? <laughs> if we're I coach, making we're making history. history. <laughs> we're going down in so the books. I had to make that sacrifice. So maybe that, that, that also is a part of maybe something that might be construed as hurtful to me because for me, it's like... I made the sacrifice for a lot of niggas to be able to shine and be everything that they are. If niggas are going to behave in a disparaging way towards me after mm. that, mm, that'll, mm, hurt, mm, that'll mm, hurt me. Mm. Like when I saw... Um, but Senzo do you think to, niggas realized when I how much Senzo care you were taking? Team, that's the thing. I, 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 I watched it and then I was like, so niggas don't realize it. Well, now you realize Did you it. only see it in, in those... Times or did you always feel no, like I these niggas don't it. really? I always felt it because niggas would say we, things. Let, yo, respectfully, uh. we didn't. No, but because even I didn't. Things. I was just like, I'll tell you one thing. Who the fuck is the nerd nigga uh, with the glasses that's this? talking oh, all shit, that oh, shit. Oh, shit? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, yeah, I didn't have glasses then, but yeah, yeah. But I was the nerdy nigga, yes. So yeah, I didn't need the freckles. You I, had I, the yeah, freckles. freckles. I didn't even need glasses. He had those. So even then, I think the only nigga that actually saw it was X. Yes, that's true. That's true. Because mm. I'd have the conversations with him. Like all these conversations. That I'm that's actually, true. We'd, two men. X has always been more. Mm. Uh, like we'd always. The, his, the, we'd always. Both of y'all, I guess, mm. have always been more awake in the room than everybody yeah, else. So to see where the vision is going. Mm. And he's also uh, another nigga that I saw that he's willing to make sacrifices for the group objective. Whereas other niggas weren't. We, me and X were the only two and niggas. And you respected that. That's it. Mm. I saw someone who's like... Some me. real nigga shit, yeah. Well, not real nigga shit. Not all of us can be the striker in the team. And that's respectable to and, accept. And you need to accept that mm. in people. Like, this guy is going to be selfish. Mm. You understand? And that's good for his design, for his role. No. I think that he can't be self-sufficient. So he needs the... So as selfish niggas. as he wants to be, <laughs> mm. he needs a team. He needs the nigga. How can we make his selfishness work for the team? Mm. Mm. That's how you need to be able to think. Yeah. And that's, that's practically what I was able to do. You know, tease it out. It is. It is. You know, and know that, dude, we're making history. We're probably not going to make the money that we deserve for this. We're mm. not going to get the love that we deserve for this. Mm. But, but it's going the entire game the is going to benefit because after us... It's going to be done this way. After us, mm. all the kids... Are going to do it themselves. They're not going to need an OG, a Rotman, and everything mm. else because that was the whole entire thing. Because we got on We're road like, ourselves. Fuck butter bing. Yeah. Fuck cash time and tear gas. Yeah. Them niggas are trying to use our youth to yeah. make themselves fresh. Let's build our to own. Still table. have a lifeline. Remember, we yeah. had that conversation. These niggas don't want to give us a seat at their table. It's yeah. fine. We'll put, build a square put, table. Put our secrets. <laughs> uh, we're not active. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> We're not active, yeah. so the kids can have them. So yeah. we're like, let's build our own table, niggas. Mm. Without yeah. these niggas. And we were able to do it, So dog. THT. Now, forget let's THT. Talk what? That was THT. THT is, yeah, is in the past. So we did THT. The tour, yes. we toured the country. That's when... We did a touring circuit. We made sure that everybody... But that's pretty runs, much where H1. we did that. Yeah, that's, yeah, well, that was the start mm. of it. Yes, that's what kicked that off. Worst still is that... How many niggas do you know that were young niggas? Like, okay, mm. fine. You know Mendoza, right? Yes. How many other niggas that he started Mendoza with? Mendoza you know? kissed me on Wait, my hand when he cool. met me. No, that's not cool. That's Res dope. Be respectful. No, that's, that's dope. Wait, hold the yeah. fuck up. I've written songs for him, but yeah. No, hold the fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> he kissed you on the hands. I've got the song credits with Mendoza. Hold the fuck. So, yeah, but he kissed me on the hand for my writing. Yeah, that's Did cool. Did he kiss you on the hand for what you wrote? He spat what I wrote. He didn't kiss you on the hand. I get for paid it. for it. Publish. He kissed me on the hand for what I wrote. No, that's nice. Respect. That's nice. No, 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 I gotta respect. The first that. time he met so, me. Yeah, that's that's amazing. That, Believe no, that's, it. So, I grew cool. up on Mendoza. Yeah, so did I. That's crazy. So did I. So did that's I. That's crazy. So, so Mendoza, Mendoza, you can't name the other niggas that he. Um, Cabello. Yes. Okay. You know TKZ, mm. but you don't know the other niggas that they came up with. Um, name all of the OGs. We're the first generation of youngins where all of us became somebody. Individually. All of us. Mm. All of us. That's why I like You understand? That. As individuals. Mm. 
And that just shows it's a blueprint for the kids who are out there. Okay, fine, let's squad up. Okay, you play this role. You play for this role. We'll play this role. Flame let's make history. And them to be able to and do then it that way. After we've made that history, we learned it and it would have built us and we we're able to go our separate ways and do our own things as self sufficient men. MT, ATM, Saudi, and all of them. And then it started happening thereafter. You see, started seeing mm. niggas squatting up, doing it. Mm. Everybody. The, yeah, all of them. Risma, Lisa, and all of them. All of these guys that are out now. The whole time I'm wave. Not just the hip-hop Didn't go niggas. to a big record label. Yo, we've got our demo. No, no, no. They mm. knew that they could make it. They knew they could take their stuff to the internet and blow up. Because mm. why? We did it. Mm. We proved. We were proof mm. of concept. True. So we followed the entire industry the way it is right now. Mm. Okay. You understand? Okay. Yes. So, you know, even like, dude, it, 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 come on. Mm-hmm. All of us have got some of the biggest credits for records in South African music history. All of us. This is true. <laughs> All of us. This is true. As niggas, dog. How many niggas can you say that, yo, oh, you understand? We can't even, uh, I, you know, we can't even, like, compete about that because be like, hey, I, I, I wrote this. But I, wrote I this did one. this. I wrote oh, this one. But I, I wrote this one. I wrote this one. I wrote this one. Yeah, you, you wrote something. Yeah, but, yo, in those stores. It's like the Mendoza kissed me on the hand. Yeah, I wrote yeah. for it. Like, you, you, <laughs> like, oh, the thing is this. You understand? He kissed you on the hand, and I think that was maybe the week after um, you guys came to the studio in, at Bada Bing in Melville. When we listened to the songs and I listened to the flows and I was like, damn it, mm. these niggas is flowing like nobody I've heard before. You understand? Mm. The week after, that was when um, Mendoza came to the studio. Mm. That was the week we recorded Boom Shakalak. That, that was, was the week crazy. we brought trap to South Africa. People mm. tried to take the credit. I bought Raf and I'm thinking to myself, Why Raf, do you say Boom Shakalak was trap? It was is trap. trap it is a trap joint. It's like a rap joint. No, it's not. It's trap because trap is about That's number one. Wait, wait, wait. Let me tell you what maybe. trap is. Trap is... Just technical definition. Okay. Listen to trap, right? It's got a certain BPM range. But you know it's not Wait. technical, right? It is technical. It is. It's barely ever technical. H- how is it never technical? The technicalities technical? are just, it, okay, are just you, for the okay, courtroom. Can I tell you why? The technicalities beat, are for the courtroom, that, nigga. No, we not. live off the culture. No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> Let me tell you something that you don't know. So We live off culture, nigga. What you don't nigga. know is that before, uh, we, we, finished off off that record, before we finished off that record, yes. we, uh, myself... Um, Senzo and X went I've to... I've heard this story. I watch you. But tell it. No, 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 no. You don't know the story. Tell it. This is the first time I'm telling it. Tell we went it. to Lockenville's house. Okay. Yeah, and we're chilling with Lockenville. Mm. And Lockenville are like, yo, we just found this new sound. It's blowing up in the States right now. It's called Trap. Mm. And they play all these Trap beats. And we're hearing this 808 is thumping and stuff. And they're like, yo, we're working on something that sounds similar to this. We play them Boom Shakalaka before it's finished. Mm. The first demo. And they said, this is it. This is that sound. Maybe the foundations of trap. No. Not the actual no, no, no. trap. It's an actual trap trap. No. That's when trap was still founding. But, dog, this was in 2012, dog. You can't expect a 2012 trap joint to sound like a 2016 roll-up. MT gave us trap. Dog, we, no, Noma Yini is trap. That's going Noma down. Yini is trap. Hold on. That's Noma going Yini. down Hold on. in Noma history. Yini is trap. What's Noma? Noma Yini, the song. Uh, Noma is trap. Yini. It's released in the Noma same year. Yini. Maybe a couple months apart. Is it trap? Yes, What's it is. that beat? It's, it is. It's good. Heavy 808 and everything else. The nigga singing yeah, on the whole entire song. That might have been Hold on, wait, wait, wait. He sang. Boom wait, he sang. It. The nigga with the deepest voice on record. <laughs> sang. On a record. Sang it. Mm. Sang it before MT did it. Before? Dog. Nomayin. I'm talking about Nomayin. Before mm. we up. Before... Um, Avery was dropped. But you know, I'm, uh, you wait, know MT was listening. singing you're before Quest. Yes, that's fine. So why that's, are you saying not, that like but that? No, hold on. You're talking studio politics. Why are you saying it like public. that? Hold on. Let me finish my point. Okay. I'm saying that to the public, in general public, in general, you might not give Uquesta the credit, but mm. that nigga, Noma Yin is a classic trap joint dog. Your mother knows it and loves it. You understand what I'm saying? It's a trap joint that your, your mother mouth. knows and loves. Wait, Watch wait, wait, wait. Watch your mouth with my mama. No, Why? I'm Watch talking about everybody mama. <laughs> yeah. Everybody mama. Talk about everybody mama. Yeah, yeah, no, no. But yeah. your mom knows all the hip hop yeah. shit. You Yo, know. what? <laughs> <laughs> your mom knows all the hip hop shit. You know <laughs> you your mom. <laughs> your mom, ah, your mom. <laughs> in, Shout ah, out your mom, to my mom. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Your mom yes. doesn't know jazz and shit. So, um, she knows this young, fresh stuff. Yo, she's please, up to the, please. She's up to please. the thing magic. Talk about your story. What I'm trying to say is this: it's, 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 if your mother knows the song, leave it's not everybody's the, mom. Everybody's mom knows you, Mama Yin. 
Everybody's mom knows that. A trap joint that they dance to, that they love. Okay. Why? Yes. Why? Because, Why? number one, just from a content perspective, we were able to take what the Americans were doing at the trap and localize it. Mm. Right? Yes. The same way we intentionally did that with Boom Shakalak. But y'all, now, y'all didn't create that, though. No. I never said we created it. Mm. But you tried to take the credit for it. No, I said we brought it to South Africa. You were part of bringing no, it. No, no, no. Nobody had done it. Yeah, but you weren't the only niggas that brought it. You were part of we're bringing it. We're the first. It. No, no, no. Nobody had done it, and we made it a hit. It was a successful hit, dog. That song was so successful. Noma In is not one of Quest's best I'm not, songs. I'm not talking about Noma In. I'm talking about Boom Shaka. So that song That's was so successful. That song. So, song was so successful, it made Kid X the most in-demand feature verse in the country immediately after the song. He was album. already. He was never. He was. And people only Kid, knew X, Kid X was X. always your, your was favorite rapper's favorite rapper. Was that was featured. his tag. No one had ever featured him. He'd never been on any song before. Cash Time had not even done no that. No one! Who had featured him? We were there always There was no hangout in features. 2012, dog. We were always doing features. Yes, you were in the studio. I'm talking about them being released as records that you're performing out there in front of the people. It's a completely different thing. And that's what I'm also saying is that don't... Do, okay, I hear you. Yeah, so your knowledge of it, right? You know it from when we're planning, when the plotting planning phases. You know MT from when he was Because I see it happening. with Abo M. Scars yeah. and Abo Maraza and all of them yeah. together. You understand? Yeah. You know him from then. Because you know that's where doing. these things yes. are brewing from. Yes, I know the brewing. And we never acknowledge that. That's no, what I don't like. We, can, we no, have we to. Cannot, we cannot. Because this. Let, let me tell you why. Because right now we must acknowledge the kid that's made the hottest track in the country that no one's heard. Because we're discrediting people. Right now we must acknowledge the kid that's made the hottest track in the country that no one's ever heard. Right now. Because we need to. Otherwise we're discrediting him. We're not, not acknowledging him, but we're acknowledging everybody else. What I'm trying to say is that you, the quality of your song does not determine how far your song gets. The market determines that, right? Okay. So if you haven't introduced a product into the market for the market to adopt that product, mm. as, as, as innovative, as groundbreaking as it can be, it's not tried, tested, or proven in the market. We proved <laughs> trap in the South African market before anybody else did. That is an unequivocal fact. <laughs> About the intention, intentionality of that, I was like, okay, fine, we'll do this trap record with X. Ne? Mm. We'll do a, a, a young R&B, quite ish sounding mm. record <laughs> with smashes. Remember that song that we did? Yeah. Who's ten no senzo, I guess that type of humility. You understand? To be that was that type of shit on records. You understand? That was so. The plan was to at some point drop that record, mm. but it, you know. Yeah, we things went south with me, and then yeah, no, it, things it were different. With you. It, it's just our movement. We were recording that shit at Bada Bing. We we're still at Bada Bing when we did that shit. Remember? Yeah, but I wasn't. Yeah, but we niggas were. had left me behind. Yeah, so you know, so that was the situation. You know, you should have left them behind like we did. So <laughs> dump them before they dump you. Um, so I hear from, you from, from <laughs> initiating. Trap in that way, right? From Boom Shakalaka, that's 2012. By 2015, we've got a song like Noma Yin. By 2016, you got a song like My Babo. You gonna take a shot? Yeah. Now, My Babo is a MT. Is that a classic? MT. It's a classic. That's it's a, a classic, smash. man. It's a. You understand? Yeah. The point was not to own trap or to be the greatest is trappers. It? No, for us. Mm. Or yeah. for me, yeah, let me yeah, say, yeah, as a yeah, producer. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, yeah. So, MT taking the trap mantle and stuff like that, it's not something that I'm competing against. I'm not arguing against that. Mm. I'm not trying to say that because he owns mm. South African trap as far as like but he embodies it. But he's also responsible for it being a thing in the country. No, he's not. Because he it was is. already a thing. It no, was already a thing. Wasn't. Boom Shakalaka was already hot. Um, trap and, uh, wasn't a thing before. Trap was roll a thing up. because of uh, Boom Shakalaka talk. Roll no, up came way no, after. No, let me tell you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. No, trap it became wasn't. a thing. Let me tell you something. After Boom Shakalaka, everybody wanted false. a trap beat. They couldn't get it. Why did? Could no, they that is it? false. Why could they not get it? Because they didn't have the proper 808s. Why did we have it? Because we had it. Because there weren't that many we producers who could no, make it. We didn't get it from South Africa. We got it from Clay. That's why people couldn't make it. That's Exactly why exactly. people couldn't people make it. They weren't making it in South Africa. They weren't making but it. But they were looking for it. Yeah, and who brought it for them to look for it? Who gave them? It's like saying... Um, a, a but y'all didn't Hold make on. it a it's thing, It's like saying Crunk was not made a thing by the Elias when he dropped fire. He did, because that one song made everybody want to do Crunk. After that one song... Who was doing Crunk? 
Who else was? No one was doing crunk before the Elias. So who else did it? Dog, everybody that came after him was doing crunk, dog. Even TIGS did crunk joints. Even Questa did a crunk, uh, crunk joint. Take that, it was a crunk joint. That's a crunk joint. That's yeah. crunk. Yeah. Come on, bro. So, th- my thing is this. Even when we were doing it then, I wouldn't say but what we But you guys doing. didn't make niggas want to do it, though. Dog, everybody. People, everybody saw people were chasing it was already. nobody before Boom Shakaka and became somebody after Boom Shakaka and said, damn it, if it can take him from zero to 100 that quick, I want it. The next song that... He became somebody-ish. Not somebody. He became somebody because we were able to do THT. somebody We were able to travel around the country. Yeah, we, the we were that somebody-ish. Song, that, no, that was somebody. You can't go to yeah, East London somebody. and put that ve- venues yeah, around some, the country, dog. We were Come somebody. On. Nah, we're dog. Mm, Come we're on, somebody. dog. We were, we were breaking, somebody. We were breaking, but he became we were, no, somebody. We were, we were breaking Kuli Chana door records, dog, at that point in time. Put some so respect we're at, at on it. But you day. didn't want to talk about it. Now you want to talk about it because you have to fight. No, it's not It's not that. You have to pull it out for the air more. No, it's not even about that. It's because obviously I the whole entire you. THT conversation mm. needs to be had as... I feel, oh, I respect that. I love that. You know? Okay. But You're as right. far as referring to it, I don't mind referring to it. So like yeah. that whole entire stage, everything, mm. THT was just a part of it. Of course. Yeah, the whole yeah. entire thing was us. It's as, just a very great part young, of it. As young guys in the industry doing it ourselves. That was the whole entire point of THT. THT gave us younger. What do you mean? As a rapper. He was always rapping. Yeah, but it gave us Yama as a rap. Nah, he didn't rap on THT. Yes, but he became that after that. I think coming from that experience pushed him into rapping. <laughs> he was always he was always rapping, dog. When you guys came to the studio, you guys came to the studio. Chief they... hasn't said what I'm saying. Nah. He said that. Nah, nah. Nah, he can say that. He can say that, but that's not true. You disagree with me. Okay. Hey, man. Uh, I, I don't know. This I is like the, the AKA he lived, thing that I said that went roof. viral. He lived under my did. roof for I don't know how many years. He recorded his album. I himself said it. Yeah, like, that's the thing is that a lot of uh, people who are popular might say things, but they're not true. And because they're popular, we just take them on face value because this mm. person is popular. Mina, I was with Younger when we were recording in 2007, 2008. Mm. And I said we were the ones. But who he had left it. He hadn't. Kinda. He, no, he hadn't. He might have when told he was on his cameraman he, shit. He wasn't. He was rapping behind dog, closed he, doors he was, dog, in he the was, closet. He was on the cameraman for ventilation. He was on the cameraman on THT because he's the only nigga that had the skills to do the camera work. So he was rapping in the closet. Practically, you could mm. say because no, nothing was released. He came to ventilation. But was he, he letting to niggas know he he's came. rapping? Yes, he came to ventilation. Wanting or to as rap. a rapper. He came as a rapper. He came as a rapper. When he met Snicker, Respectfully, he was trying yeah, to get signed. He couldn't even believe. He's like, how could they sign this Questa nigga? Fuck this nigga's wife. That's what he was saying. <laughs> you understand? Know That's what he thought. That's crazy. You understand? Know He's like, how? They're going to oh. sign this nigga while I'm right here. Mm. Grinding it out in the office. You know? So he's always been rapping. Just like I've always been rapping. That's mm. why I, there's not an, a point. It's like, for me, it's like, yo... You know, making music is like one so of those So you things. had always been rapping? You didn't just do that because you were helping niggas? Ah, I'd always been making music. You always were that before even coming into yeah. working with other so niggas? I started in 2012. Mm. No, 2002. Sorry. Yeah, because I'm like 2012. We were already on road. Yeah, and that's, and that's <laughs> THT. Yeah. 2012 was THT. That's right. Mm. So already in 2002, I already had my EJ set up. Mm. I was already putting samples together, rapping on tracks. You understand? So producing that sounds like producing. No, EJ, EJ. What's that? Yeah, EJ is where you take sound samples and you put them together. I started Fruity Loops that in 2004. That sounds like producing. It is. It is. It is. But yes. I, I, yeah, but it's EJ. Nah, it's like it's like a game. It's like playing PlayStation. But that's producing. It, 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 hey man, if you play FIFA um, World Manager, that's managing. It is a team. No, yeah. it's a game, dog. EJ was a game. Yeah, but you start the art of managing. Yeah, yeah. well, you I learn the arts. Yes, I, yes. I learned how to arrange a song. So that's learning producing. Yes, yes. How, a chorus, everything. Yes. I learned that. I learned yes. arrangement and everything. So yes. I started that at 12. By 14, I had Fruity Loops. You know, and then I was actually making beats. You okay. know, by 16, I was on Metro FM. Well, my songs were playing on Metro FM. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Wait, which song is this? Give us, you have to I, give us the credits. Because uh, we can't just give you anything here. No, this was like, we yeah. Don't, we well, don't I give mean, these the, away. The song wasn't really a hit. It was the first, we I, can't I, let you I made the, the first single I spoke about it um, is Sugar Sugar by Sugar Smacks, his first single. So what credits are you taking for that? No, I made the beats, that was it. Oh, yeah. when did this drop? 2006, 2007. I can't mm. remember. Between there. 
So you made the beat and gave it to Smacks how now? How? I made the beat, I delivered the steps, Flabba was there, put it up on the Jazzworks Cubase. Were you already working for them? Nah, dog, I was making beats. I went so to how the did office. you make I went to a show, I went backstage to the show. This nigga's making this sound like it. Like, yo, I just gave them. I'm, tell me how you gave them. <laughs> okay, well, what happened is that they were doing the Sprite Hip Hop tour. Okay. And then I was in a taxi passing. Um, I was on my way to Brie. So okay. the taxi passes by Museum Africa, and then they were doing it on the side of Museum Africa. I don't know what that square is. Well, this is Sulu mm. Square, whatever. Ne? Whatever No, it not Walter Sulu Square. Mary Fitzgerald Square. Mm. Mary Fitzgerald Square. Um, what is Sulu Square in Switch? So, um, yeah. And then I told the taxi to stop and drop me off there. Then I called my little brother. He was at home. I said, yo, bring my USB. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll give you the taxi money when you get here. So he borrowed some taxi so money. So home is where? Because you have to give us now the... In four ways. Yeah. I was coming from a party. The distance. In Soweto. Mm. Yeah. So, so it I takes your brother how long to get to town now? Uh, it doesn't matter because there was a, an event there. Oh, so they there all they day? They there all day. Mm. So I'm like, yo, just bring my USB. Where were you going? I was going home. So then you just jump I off. You're like, Fana, fuck I'm that. I'm in a taxi. And yeah. I'm saying, Fana, there's niggas <laughs> rapping. This nigga's playing basketball. Yeah. This is hip hop playing. And you jumped off the cab. I'm, I'm supposed to be here. This is where I'm supposed to be. Oh, that's where you were going? No! I was going. Oh, dog, this is your life calling. I, I was going to breathe. No, dog. What it's do hip hop, dog. I'm a kid. So what do it's you mean I'm supposed day. to be here when you say I'm supposed to be that's here? That's it. That's exactly it. Destiny. I, dog, it's hip hop, dog. <laughs> Anything that's got hip hop to do. <laughs> I, I'm there, dog. Back then in 2000 and, what? 2007, 2006, how many hip hop events were there? A dime not a many. And not then many. so a hip hop event, you see it all. Oh, I gotta, hmm, I gotta and go also, see. Mm. Dog, the walking distance from 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 Mary Fitzgerald Square to Bree is mm. a normal walking distance yeah, either way. Nothing, yeah. So I just stopped to robots. Because I early. have to see. Yeah, I have to see. Yeah, I'm mm. just seeing, dog. And I'm going I'll, to Bree and then I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> so I came. I saw. Mm. I called my little brother. Mm. I dropped off the beats. So Squatter Camp is already Squatter Camp at this it's, time. It's just Slicker and Sugar Smacks and, and Questa was there. He was one of the MCs for the things. Um, um, in 2000 and when? Seven. Um, Sprite they already had Questa then. Yeah, that was, yeah. yeah. 2007. So okay. that's when, yeah, so that's when that started. Mm. Um, and yeah, so just from that chance occurrence, knowing that, you know. Um, so your brother comes with the... Beats. USB, yeah, mm. and I give it to Smacks. You approach him like how? I walk up to him. Yo, Smacks, I make US, I make beats. But they they accepting approaches and all that. They're, they're, they're not on they some VIP fans, function. Well, uh, nah, there was no yeah, VIP they, function. You just nah, pull it's, up. It's hip hop. Yeah. yeah, it's hip hop. Yeah, especially there. It's like um, hip hop it? still like hip hop showdown. Mm. It was like I went to hip hop showdown. Hip hop is still hip hop. Yeah, at Menlin. It was still. I on okay, yo, yo, hear my beats. Yeah, I feel you. You understand? And that was it. And, um, I was there at Menlin at the hip hop showdown. Hmm? I was there at Menlin at the yeah. hip hop showdown. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The legendary pick of me and Kenan Forbes that mm. always comes up as a throwback. Mm. You from, understand? That was there. It's from that, that exact the event. Yeah. So, so from that point onwards, knowing that okay, fine, clean the making of the beats part is something I do mainly for me because I'm not really trying to make beats. I'm trying to rap. Mm. So. It's one of those things, but if I can sell these beats, I can get into the circles. Mm. You understand? It's a. Then I realized, like, no, actually, I want to produce. I don't want to actually be the one making the beats. I want to find the guys that are making the beats and tell them, yo, make a beat like this. Make a beat like that. Make a beat like this. May add mm. this to the beat or whatever. What made you feel that way? Because that's what Pop Daddy did. <laughs> no. Because yeah. Diddy would have did it. Yeah. Uh, you know? <laughs> okay. So I went back to my. That's a good reason. You understand? That's it. This <laughs> is the Puff Daddy thing. You know what I mean? Um. So I'm too comfortable as well in the English language. Okay. So you know your way around it very well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I so will it makes say. it very difficult to to get into any other language because for you to have the same confidence that you have in English, mm. you need to have the articulation. Yes, you have to have the same level of articulation. So because I can't articulate myself, mm. I lack confidence. It's that that's the reason why I don't speak my own language, like Tsonga. It's just like mm. I'm not as expressive in it as you, know? you are in English. You know, mm. which then takes my in English. My you can IQ, own the room. My IQ does not come out when I speak song. Mm. <laughs> you can't tell. Yeah, you can't yeah. tell. You can't so, tell that this man is lit. So now, I'm able to do it in the raps. 
because I'm writing it down. I don't have to say it. Mm. Also, the tone is is, is yeah. You don't have. So the I can help you pin. I can pin mm. the nice. I know what to say. Screen. I just can't. <laughs> yeah, that's that. <laughs> so <laughs> it just made sense. I was like, okay, mm. fine. Let me collect everything that is needed to make history. And this is all you just falling into the coach role. That's it. Mm. Is that I'm gonna be the coach? It's fine. It's yeah. fine. The niggas will whatever. They'll they'll dismiss me. I'll be inconspicuous as, as long as I need to be. Yeah. But I'm getting what I need to get done. You know, I'm mm-hmm. earning my stripes. And and I then think, walking and walking out of it, you're walking out with what and into what in your mind. What have you decided? What have you learned? And what do you feel like you have at that point and what are you trying to create? No, nah, for me, it's just a constant journey. I, I don't feel like I've walked into something and walked out of something. No, I just feel like I'm walking. And Ooh. these are the encounters that, I, that I'm having along the way. I Ooh. have this encounter, I have that encounter, I have that encounter. Mm. These are just different chapters. Mm. So for other people... You've always had that? I've always had that. You understand? That's why I didn't make too much of it. You know, I didn't make too much of it because, like, it's like, uh, well, mm. it, at the end of the day... Because the way you talk made it sound like you took it very personally. No. Mm-mm. But Me I having hear an animated you know. Instagram live, mm-hmm. I'm the only person there. I need to be a character. You know, I need to be entertaining. I need to get people to watch. A- another thing that people don't understand, they don't understand showmanship. So now if you're going to be boring, no one's going to watch your content, dog. I'm not as famous as you, but I get more views because I'm more entertaining. You understand? Not me, but I hear you. Yeah, that, 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 that's a thing. Not me, but you know, I so hear you. A nigga will hate be like, what does this nigga have? Why do people keep mm-hmm. watching this nigga? Why, do they, why, watch, they, why, why do they even care about us? <laughs> it's because the nigga's entertaining, dog. The nigga knows exactly what to say, how to say it. You know what I mean? He's practiced this thing. You know, he's observed mm-hmm. it, he's watched it, he knows the rules to the game. Where did you get there for? From Puff the, Daddy. the showmanship. Puff Daddy. Puff Daddy. Daddy. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> you understand? Aye, aye. You understand? <laughs> I did it because Diddy did it. You understand? That's it. Dog, for me, Puff Daddy was everything. Mm. Dog, I loved Puff Daddy so much, my little brother had to be mace all through our childhood. He does have a mace ish no, 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 but it's, feel. Yeah, well, he's quiet. Yeah. Like, yeah, in his stance demeanor, way, yeah. in the demeanor, yeah. Yeah, but either way, like in the passage at, at the house, that would be mm. like Hype Williams' set. You turn the lights off. Oh, you mean literally in the performance? Dog, that tunnel thing that they do with the suits, mm. with the shiny suits? Dog, I never knew YSL was Ye Saint Laurent. I just thought they were the yeah, people that make my dad's suits. Yeah, I think my shoulder work I got there from Diddy also. You understand? That's it. Mm. That's Diddy. So, like, I pull out my dad's suits and everything else. You know, I only found out later that, oh, damn it, I was actually really doing it like Diddy. Do- I, I, like, even, like, <laughs> swag. The simple things, like, yeah. like fashion. I never mm. knew that my dad was, like, onto, like, some real high-end fashion. Because mm. I never knew what it was. I used to wear DKNY not knowing what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used to wear pericard in as a kid, not knowing what Not knowing what it is. Until I got yeah. to the kids in the hood. And, it's like, and they're like, oh! oh. I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's like, all oh, right. <laughs> you know, what is this? I feel you. You know, so the, 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 the you... one thing that I could never get right mm. was that our industry was not the same as the States. So we couldn't do the bling bling like Diddy did because he brought the bling bling into the rap game. Okay. He brought the sheen into the rap game. Yeah, he made it shine. But I could figure it out how he did it. He had Clive Davis. Okay. Yes who's one of the most respected record executives, top executive at Sony. Mm. You know, Arista Records, mm-hmm. Aretha Franklin, all that type of shit. Mm-hmm. You know, Whitney Legendary Houston, shit. Legendary, yeah. Clive Davis. Yeah, then, Like Alicia Keys, you get introduced to her on mm. Oprah's couch. Why? Because Oprah's on CBS, Columbia Broadcasting Service, and he was the head of legal at CBS Records before it became Sony, Arista Ooh, Records, and all that stuff. Stripes. So I needed to learn history. Mm. I needed to study the history for me to be Puff Daddy. Mm. And then I knew, okay, fine. Damn, How I did you find all this history? I studied it. How this did books, you find it? I, I always studied. That's the thing. Um, Hello, you make it sound like you can I know. That's go the thing. It's so, it's so simple. It's so simple. That's it. Actually, that's exactly what I did. I went to the library. I got taken to the, I think it's minus floor or minus two at the city library in Joburg. Okay. In town. Yeah. And then that's the archives. And from the archives, you can read all the newspapers from the beginning of newspapers in, in Johannesburg, South Africa. So 
what I would do is that I would read history through newspapers. On what? Nothing specific? Just, I'd read. You're just reading everything? Well, I started with um, um, June 17, uh, 1976. That's where I started. But you're reading everything. I'm just reading the newspaper. Yeah, so just you just read the, the whole not, thing? No, when you read the newspaper, right, you're not getting the story of like someone's autobiography where it's been summarized and everything else, you mm -hmm. know? You're getting the story on that day and the story the way is developed. it was told on the day. With mm. all the granular details mm. of this exact... Mm, 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 mm. And it goes day by day. So you go from eight, 17, 18, 19, 20, and you realize, damn it, I can actually know all of history. Know how the city was brought together. If I how just read these pages, read the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Are you shaming me? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. And then that's what you did. That's what I did. I went to the <laughs> thing and Jake. While everybody was reading books. That's genius. I'm like, somewhat. That's, that's dumb. genius. Why would you read a book? A book is like a that's summary. Crazy. I'm actually reading the story. The actual story, the way it was it told. A book. <laughs> Wait, so now what's your routine? You're just always going out there reading newspapers? I, well, I read newspaper daily. As mm. part of my daily routine, like even now in the car, or maybe mm. I've got it here, my business day. But now I read because I've converted a lot of my reading stuff into audio. Yeah, now yeah. I read just to train my brain and to okay. maintain. To look at words and pick them up. No, no. Just what? to train my brain because your brain gets dumber. Your smartphone is actually making your brain stupid. Oh, okay. Oh, also to exercise your like, brain. Yes, my memory and everything. Like, yeah. Dude, I spat out slick as numbers. I, I'm mm. not doing that because... Just in, gen in general. It's an, it's an exercise. Lyrical exercise. <laughs> Y'all niggas ain't tired, right? <laughs> you understand? So, from reading the newspapers, memorizing them. Reading um, lyrics. Listening to lyrics and memorizing them. Because the nice thing about rap is that they never wrote the lyrics in the songs. Mm. Like, all yeah. the rap book, you they never to, wrote it. You had to you learn had to them. know it off of. <laughs> you understand? You had to listen to that man, yeah. So, learning that taught me how to retain information That's when true. I hear it and everything That's else. So, true. I had that practice and it everything taught else. taught me that as well. Yeah. So, now when retaining this information, when I write information, when I write things, I write raps. When I study, I write raps. When I, everything, I write raps. Yeah. I study all the newspapers, I read all the current affairs, I can mm. tell you, I can wax lyrical about June 16, I can wax lyrical about the civil rights movement and everything else. I can wax lyrical about all those things mm -hmm. and code them in my mind in sort of like a rap way. Yeah, just to keep it there. You know, just to keep, keep mm. it there. And then I'm also learning raps. And then I'm also learning from the rappers. I'm also observing their moves learning mm, the lyrics, mm, you know, don't worry if I write rhymes, I write checks. What does that mean to me? Ooh, mm. I know I wrote, what is I just wrote about? some rhymes, mm. but I haven't written uh, checks. I need to write the checks. I need to be writing checks, because mm. Diddy says, don't worry if I wrote the rhyme, I wrote the I check. I wrote the check, yeah. And then that changed my, that, that line alone, <laughs> it's like, whoo. Because if you're not. Oh, you it, when you started reading newspapers, just elaborate. Mm, yeah, I was 10. So, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy. I was 10. Uh, it mm. was because I was doing a school project um, in grade four about June 16. And then I just went to the library from there and then I And continued. then just made it, it a habit. It, well, I, mm. I was already benefiting from it. I got good marks in that project and now I was just self studying. So and that's the thing. The self studying. The self studying. Mm. I just self studied the whole entire time. I learned mm. about all these funny things. Mm. All these funny things. You know what I mean? Mm. It doesn't matter what it is, science and everything else. Like even now mm. I'm looking through this whole entire thing. Like, Dude, any shelf that's got textbooks at the house, mm. I've ran through all of them. Everything. Because mm, that's the first thing you did when you walked into this house. You went to this shelf, <laughs> and then you just started, <laughs> then you pulled the book out, <laughs> then you opened it, you're like, hmm, this is the book you should be reading. He's telling me the <laughs> book I should be reading here at the crib. I'm like, I like this no, guy. No, seriously, because that's the thing. I study this thing, mm. and it's assisted me, especially like, when I get onto a podcast, doesn't matter how many people invite me to a podcast, mm. I'm going to talk about interesting stuff. Mm. Because you always got I'm it, consuming yeah. a whole lot of content. Yeah. There's, you know, I, mm. I dig from a very you deep You can well. take from you yeah, anywhere. So yeah. doesn't matter if I did five different podcasts in a week. You're going to watch all of them. You have to watch all <laughs> you have five to watch all of them. them. Because it's, it's I didn't stuff. say the same thing everywhere. And, yeah, it, and I, I can't feel. because I'm drawing from so much and there's mm. so much to be said. There's too it much was to a say. different day every time. You understand? Mm. So knowing that and knowing my role means that now going forward, you know, I, I said in another podcast that I'm in the audio business. I started with music 
I used to make MP3s. Now I make, you know, just audio that you can listen to, like an audio documentary and everything else, uh, a news bulletin. I'm not too concerned with the visuals um, mm. because I feel like uh, visuals are a barrier of entry. Maraza was telling me about all this fucking Netflix ready equipment that he has to buy and shit like mm. that. And I'm just thinking that shit, like, you know, that means he has to sacrifice his kid going to Michael House now. No. Or Hilton to buy a camera. And I'm thinking to myself, no, 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 no. We don't mm. need to be doing that. What we can do is actually go back to what our history and our tradition is as black people, which is oratory tradition, which means podcasting is us, actually. We've always podcasted. It's just that we never recorded it. The mm. recording technology. We've always made music. We just never recorded it. So the recording Ooh. industry caught up to what we are doing, right? And... The content and the stories, right? Right now that we're getting in podcasting are coming from very Anglo-centric. So English, the UK, or American stuff, okay? And maybe some European stuff, right? Mm. But because the European language groups are smaller um, than English is, mm -hmm. you, you don't see a, a lot of it if you don't speak English. You know, so you don't see all the French podcasts. You don't see all the German podcasts. You don't see all of that. Mm -hmm. So the English stuff is, is much bigger and broader mm -hmm. and wider. Now, where do you have the most people to speak English? Africa. We got more people than the UK. We got more mm. people than the US. Mm. So the potential market mm. from is a Africa. is Africa because in the US, yes, the English is spoken in one part of it. When you move north, they speak 50% French, 50% English. Mm. When you move mm. south, they mm. speak Spanish. Mm. Mm. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So they've got that small mm. The gap is smaller. Yeah. Mm. The opportunity, the total addressable market. Now, what has been our challenge within the music business? The music business is that technologically, CDs, cassettes, and everything else, those are barriers of entries for our market to consume a product, to pay for mm. it. You don't need CDs and everything else. It's cheaper and cheaper and cheaper to access music and our content and everything else. Okay. So we've democratized the access to it. So now anybody can afford to access music. As soon as you're allowing everybody to access music, you mean mm. that your market is not just the rich Americans who can okay. buy CDs and everything else. And that's why yeah, American yeah, yeah. music it's not industry luxury. is a lot bigger than us mm. because they've got a whole lot more people that are willing to buy these CDs that are, it's part of their disposable income and everything else. Yeah. Even though there's only 350 million of them here and there's 1.3 billion of us here, they're a bigger market because they've got more customers. You know, yeah. They've got more demand for the yeah, product. Yeah. But now that the costs are coming down, the distribution is coming down. We can down. now play the game. We can now participate. No, we can what? dominate. Because Ooh. you've got the numbers, dog. <laughs> There's three times as many people yeah. here than there are there. Yes. So um, as a total addressable market, we're three times bigger than them. Mm. You know? And if you look at, like, our side of the continent, the Bantu side of the continent, which is us, mm. from anything from southern Nigeria all the way down to South Africa, right? Mm. Um, uh, across East Africa, Tanzania, Kenya, and everything else. All of us are Bantu people. So mm. all our languages come from the same group of languages so all our languages you mm. know are interrelated we've got the same yeah, sort yeah. of um, um sentence structure and everything mm. else so we can mm. understand each other's languages mm. and also that informs the way in which we write songs and we express ourselves so mm. we can understand each other's expressions yeah so that's why even when they don't understand the language per se and what you're they saying they can understand the feeling they can understand the, the expression yeah, exactly mm. you understand mm. so we've got a huge market mm. Mm -hmm. a huge market mm. it's gigantic bro Mm. It's gigantic, you know. So there's 800 million people living in that area. So are you somewhat saying podcasting is going to be bigger than music? In Africa. It's not even about podcasting being bigger than music. Podcasting is going to be the main format when it comes to audio. Now, so what you don't understand is that there's been a technological jump. The reason why more people consume more podcasts these days mm. is simple. Yes. That these things have changed everything. Yeah. These things... This is the most successful Which wearable, you have on right now. The most Why? successful wearable device ever made. Why do you have them on right now? You don't see everybody having an Apple Watch. Mm. You don't see everybody having the glasses that you wear. Mm. As far as wearable technology, these things, these things give me access to whatever. I just wear them because it's habitual. And plus, these ones have actually got transparency. So they've got microphones on the side. Mm. So what I hear is actually the sound through the speaker picked up by the microphone. Okay. Yeah. So it's coming back to you somewhat. No, it's played into my ear. Yeah. I'm not even hearing the room. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to the room. There's a difference. 
Mm. You understand? So the sounds in the background are coming, mm. are playing in my ear. Sometimes I put my thing on listening and I can hear every single conversation in the restaurant. Every single conversation. I just turn my head, I can hear what they're talking about over there. Mm. That microphone's picking it up. Okay. You know? So, so you're this creep. technology, no, <laughs> this technology, right, is much better than this technology. Even this technology fucks up your eyesight, number one, from using yes. your phone too much, right? And yeah. number two is that visually, you have to stop everything else when you're watching something. Mm. You understand? So that's a technology. It's like reading a newspaper as well. I can't multitask while reading a newspaper. But audio, I okay. can multitask. Mm. So there's more places in... There's more opportunities to consume audio content than there is. Oh, for any other form of content. You're right, because it's not as demanding. Yeah. Also, when it comes to production, it's just order. This microphone is probably better than any microphone that you can buy in the studio. This microphone on this one. Mm, the VN out here is going crazy. You can put it on the table like this. You can have a podcast just clean. Mm. That audio is clean. It so is, now imagine all the history. All the stories that we've been telling by the fire that haven't been recorded that we can now record because the technology is there and we can distribute because the technology mm. is there and we can monetize because the technology Speaking is there about and, all that. And, and the market is also there because it's affordable mm. it's accessible there's no there's nothing there's nothing that america can do to us anymore that mm. is exciting because yeah, the, yeah, we've got our own space. We've got our own space, we've got yeah. our own culture, which yeah. we, d- we dig from a, a deeper well than they can ever. Yeah, they yeah, were, we've they got ripped. the deepest well. They, they were ripped from the, the umbilical cord. The forever. You yeah. understand? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, they, yeah. There's no, there's no, they can't teach us about culture. Yeah, no. They need to learn it from nah. us. Yeah. You understand? And that's why... And as soon as we can document our own shit... Then we are we'll, documenting. You feel me? And, mo- and they're also interested because they want to hear. Of course. And we are interested because we of want course. to share. Yeah, yeah. And the Chinese are interested because we're just cooler than them. You don't. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, dog. We're cooler than them. So a lot of people are like, yo, a, a lot of rappers are trying to make it in, in, in America. And I'm thinking to myself, why would you want to make it in America with 300 million people when you'd much be better served by making it in India, which has a billion people, mm. or China, which has over a billion people, mm-hmm. or Africa, which has over a billion people? Yeah. You don't appreciate Saul's move on any level. I saw you express yourself because on a different level. I needed to do like that. I needed to express it. Day. I needed to express it because no, Mac G couldn't express it. I saw, so I felt respectfully. I don't know none of y'all niggas, you feel me? I'm new in the space. I don't want to, you know, you feel me? <laughs> but I was just watching, so I'm watching. I'm like... I was like, I don't know if Mac G feels how he's saying he feels. Okay. But I understand why he wouldn't express how he really feels. Can I tell you the truth? Mm. I spoke to Cesar. Who's Cesar? Cesar Jom. Oh, Jom, yes. Mm-hmm. At the beginning of the year. The greatest of all time. So I spoke to Cesar and I said, this is after his, his whole Unati drama and everything else. I said, yo, mm. these radio stations are making soul offers. Huh? Yeah. I said to Cesar, these radio stations are making soul offers. And the offers they're going oh, to make. Offers. Yes. Oh, okay. Right yeah. now. This is before the radio season in March, April. I think we had this mm. conversation sometime in February. And of course they would, because Sol is on fire. So I said, yo, bro, if you've got any influence at Kaya, mm. hire Sol. Because I know you're the only person that can hire him and still allow him to stay on the pod. Are you now saying you got him hired? I'm just saying. I mean, no, no, no. This is me. It's like us having a conversation brother to brother, right? Are you serious? So I said that to Cizu. And he's like, yo, but what would he feel? I was like, yo, as long as the pay is enough, I'm sure he's going to take the offer. He's going to accept it. But the worst thing is that I'd hate it to be someone else who gives him that offer because I know he's going to accept it. And that someone else is not going to protect Max. So like why can. Kaya? Because Sizwe has got the influence to say, yo, let's not take him from the podcast. Or let's not take him off from the podcast. Mm. Let's take him. Let's have him here. Yeah, but let's let him live. That's crazy. And why, what makes you feel that way? What do you or mean? because of Caesar, you say? Yes, I'm yeah, having the conversation with Caesar. I'm trying to help Mac. Because I'm like, your biggest talent here 
is a target for all these other niggas yeah. that are trying to sabotage you. Yeah. And they're trying to bring you down. So they're going to make him offers. They're going to try and thing with you. So he is a problem for radio, of course. What do you mean? Mac. Yes. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, well, not really. Because I said this to Sizu in the same conversation. I said, <clears throat> you and Mac are not competing because Mac is on YouTube. Mac is on podcasting. And you guys have got radio, which means you guys have got access to music. Mm. Podcasters yeah, yeah, yeah. will never have access to music mm. because radio can pay the licensing fees to have music on. Mm. Okay. They make that much money mm. so they can pay to have music. Mm. You understand? And music is what actually makes radio. Yeah. It's the playlist thing, you yes, understand? Yes, yes, yes. Podcasting doesn't set. have that, so you're it's not competing. Set, yeah. mm. It's different platforms. You understand? It's yeah. completely different. You know, you've got the, the 20-minute clock. You have to do your link within 20 yeah. minutes. Your you commercial. Song. You understand? Commercial. Yeah, you, yeah. you understand? It's a completely different format. So mm. it, I also have to be aggressive with the way I paint him as a sellout as well. Because Why? I knew that he would accept the offer, which means that I know that he will... Stab Mac in the back if given the chance. Why so what I need to do? Why you call him stab in the back? Uh, no, he hasn't stabbed him in the back yet. Yes, which to, is kind of how you said it, but okay. The, so you don't feel so. That if way. you were to ever stab mm. Mac in the back, he's now seen the consequences thereof. And what are the consequences? What I just did to him, everybody will be doing to him. To come and say you're a sellout, you motherfucker. You understand? Mm. So to. Make sure that, yes, you take this Kaya so offer. So you're scaring you straight. Yes. Scared That's straight. the only way, dog. That's the only way. People only respond to fear. The authority. <laughs> <laughs> the authority, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's it. That's the only way. Like, That's the only way. You know, I, like I spoke to his manager. Move. And I told his manager, yo, I've got no beef. I just mm. need to make sure that I protect my niggas from themselves. Because I know how my niggas are. Mm. I know my niggas will betray their own niggas for mm. bread. I've seen my niggas. Because bread is powerful to niggas. Certain to, niggas. You understand? Mm. And I knew that he's one of those niggas that bread is powerful. He's for. looking for it. But I mean, you can't also blame niggas because niggas love bread. You understand? Niggas grew up without bread. Uh, some niggas put themselves in the situations where they need to now spread bread to make other people like them. And when you're not a handsome guy, <laughs> you're not a good looking guy, you know, yeah, you either yeah. need to be funny or have mm. money. Yeah. And once your jokes run out, the bitches want money. Yeah, you got to Uber her. You got to you understand? pay All for dinner. Stuff. You got to and, and now, gotta now pay for the pussy too. You, you understand? So now the bread <laughs> is the looking bread thin. The bread has to be long. Yeah, it <laughs> has to be long. Yeah. It has to be long for you too. There's pressure. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm. The bread has to be long for you to belong. Ooh. You understand? There's Otherwise... Proof. He has proven he has the buzz he says is written. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the yeah, buzz no, has to be I, long I, for you to be yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I bit that As from Proverbs. He Proverbs said yeah, that? Some of these rappers are faker than weave on hair. Weave, get it? That means they don't really be long hair. I remember that. Was that in the uh, what, what, Proverbs. eight? Book of Proverbs. Oh, some, his some album. Some the Book of Proverbs, yeah. Mm, that's yeah. fire. So, shout out to Proverbs, that's, that's the goal, <laughs> that's the goal. Yeah, like, you understand? So, yeah, yeah. It, we had I that came discussion. Up on it, we yeah. had that discussion yeah. about how he structured business-wise. Remember that discussion? How we d- said, okay, who are the niggas that are actual, the moguls in the business, in the rap mm. game? Who are the niggas that are actually making it outside of just the raps? Remember that discussion we had? We broke down everything. We broke down that the, the, the Mugs breakout album wasn't all that even though the hype was there. You know mm. what I mean? We broke down Proverb actually being the richest rapper in the game. Oh, yeah, because he had now was on the e- idols. E- everything. Yeah. Everything. Just yeah. from a bit. We looked at him and he yeah, like, guys. Yeah. It's like, yo, this actually, is the guy. Nobody's checking for this guy, but actually. <laughs> but he's the guy who's actually. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> he's belonging. He's belonging. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he's belonging, dog. He's belonging. You know, so, mm. so um, I had to figure out a way for myself to be part of the system, belong in the system, grow the system. Now that there's podcasting that is successful and everything else, I feel Mm. like all of us now need to play that very important role so that we don't end up like Guaito did. Okay. Where all these dudes were talented, but they didn't have the business acumen, so the business was owned by other people. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like uh, hip-hop in America is. Mm. They're talented as fuck, but mm. the man, the record company is owned. They all work for the man. They all work for the uh, mm. man. And the reason why they'll work for the man mm. 
um, in, in that situation is because um, for them, um, they're outnumbered. Mm. So the man, the white man, has got all the capital and has got all the numbers and mm. he is the market. Oh, yeah, Whereas, the white man has all the numbers. Yes. Mm. They, mm. So here we are the market. Mm. So the white man is not, he's only, he can only play a role as a middleman. Mm. You understand? He can mm. only play a role as a middleman. So mm. we've got an advantage here in Africa where we actually mm. have the numbers, we can speak to our own, we don't the need white the white man. The white man can only come in and finesse. You understand? Oh, yo. yo. Let me come in but, and... But if we don't have anything, if we don't understand our value, mm. then the white man has got everything for us, perceptively. That's yeah. what we th think. Yeah, yeah. You understand? So that's what I didn't want to happen. And also, shout out to C's. C's is an is a OG in the for game. For being an OG and also knowing that, yo, let me make sure I help Mac. Let Excuse me take me. pain so off his hands. Ooh. Let me get Kaya to do that. Mm. Mm. So that he doesn't have to worry about... And that was the conversation that me and Cesar were having. So when you saw Cesar replying to my tweet, to pay he so. replied to my tweet. He didn't reply to anybody's tweet. Mm. And said, delete this tweet. Because there's pressure to pay Saul. There's pressure to pay Saul. Because Saul is... You understand? Saul is the business. But now the thing is this, Mac couldn't have this convo with Cesar because it's like, hey, I might need help. Mm. Me and Cesar as brothers said... Mm. And then I was like, see, hit him up and then speak Let's to him and go. see how we'll see about this. And, you know, see, pulled through. He stuck to the deal. Shout but the thing is this. Sees is an honorable guy. He can stick to he his is. word. Mac is an honorable guy. Yeah. He can stick to his word. Saul is talent. Yeah. And he's an it girl. <laughs> so they'll always be someone on the for bigger sale. Oh, yeah. shit. You understand? That's crazy. So to make sure that the whole entire podcasting space is secured and safe. That and it doesn't else, come into jeopardy. We needed to make sure that Saul does not leave. A couple years ago, you were on television arguing with a whole lot of people that know way less about, way less than you in this space. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, told the, people The last time that, that the, 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 the People last time they had numbers. Cared about the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's be honest. The numbers are up there on YouTube. You sat there <laughs> and argued that I think you're the one that ended up ultimately getting FOCA on number one that year, yeah? Well, of all of list. us. All of us, yeah. All yes, of us. but you were the one pushing that narrative that, yo, if we are saying that yeah, the was. hardest rapper... It doesn't matter that he's not on these beats. It's not, he doesn't have to be on trap beats. Yes, exactly. He's still a rapper. And mm -hmm. people felt and reacted to you on social media and just all over. Like, no, Nasty C's no fans, Ray, uh, uh, Reese's fans. fans. All, the, all the American wannabe rappers' fans attacked yeah. me. Yeah. But people and who know music. Fast forward, those are biggest ex ex uh, exports. exports, yeah. yeah. And, you you said that about Foga, about Costa. I said Costa. that. Yeah, I said that. He, you said people call him a gimmick. gimmick. I mm. said he's a gimmick. I said mm. he is a gimmick, but his gimmick is gonna work because it's authentic to what South African people want, and it's gonna be bigger than SEC and A Reese. You know, and people clown me and out. And those guys are not in the country. They, those guys work outside the country now. more than anything else. More They're than. the most in demand. Mm. I saw Kaya Bengu saying, "Yo, I'm in Paris right now, and they, and my Uber just played the new Costa Teach." I've never seen and anybody. Costa is in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> Some niggas in Paris. Mass music is in the UK somewhere. <laughs> Tyler <laughs> ICU is in there. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Pori and Kanza. But now, is none of them niggas going to come and say, yo, Nota was right, guys? None of them. Nobody is, which is why I'm giving you the platform. No, so but I'm just saying, it's like, for me, it's like, does it nobody matter Nobody has come to death anymore? You. Does it matter anymore? So nobody has come back to say, I yo. said, I said about Nasty, I said, yo, I've been around before you, and I'm still going to be around after another day. going to suck your dick. <laughs> I remember that talk. You understand? And then what happened? He played a song called La Vida Loca mm. at his listening session somewhere. I, I saw a video of it. Mm. And someone said, hey, La Vida Loca, in La Vida Nota. It was as if someone threw a snake at them. My, the mention of my name sent chills down everyone's spine. I watched that as a video, I was like, damn. Yeah. 
<laughs> what do you mean by that? There's a video. They yeah. were sitting by some mural. Zulu Man with some power. He had a song on yeah. his thing called La Vida Loca or something. And when he introduced it, people were like, hey, because my name is La Vida Nota. Yeah. So they're like, hey, because they thought he said La Vida Nota. Mm. The way people reacted in that video, it was as if someone threw a snake at them. <laughs> like, dude! Mm. How <laughs> dare you bring up the who? <laughs> the <authorities laughs> name here. And imagine, I'm not even there, but imagine me watching that video and thinking, yo, that means Sabaraj. You have fun terrorizing. Oh, but how can you not? How can you how not? Can you how not? can you not? Sitting at your crib and watching niggas just scattering <laughs> everywhere. You know when uh, there's mm. that picture of that guy, I don't know if he's an Indian monk or a Chinese guy, he's just smoking, he's sitting on the top of the thing and then you can see everybody just at the bottom. <laughs> that's how I feel. You know, uh, that's how I feel. So. The La Vida, the life of. Right, the life of. The life of. To call you. The La Vida is, I made up that name. It's in the life of Nota. So I put that on all my social media. It's, in, it's the life of me. La Vida Nota. The life of Nota. Or Which also rhymes with La Vida Loca. Well, it comes from La Vida Loca. We we'll see. Which comes from That's Ricky. Which comes from Ricky Martin. <laughs> Shout out to the ghost. He had to, you know. <laughs> he, he made Cisco pay thirty percent of his publishing. Play, he didn't play with Cisco. <laughs> and I mean, I did I the same heard thing. About that. I, I did the same thing to his. niggas as well. What niggas? There was some guy who uh, made a song. Hey, hey, hey. They sampled like the beginning of Nyan's Felang out. Like just the, they chopped the part and then they repeated it and repeated it. I just mm. called my publisher. I was like, yo, I want 100% of that publishing. Oh, no. It took 100? Yeah. They gave you 100? You want that? How? Oh, it's, it's mine, dog. You can't sample my shit. Yes. It's not a negotiation, dog. That's my kids' money. That's my grandkids' money. I'm saying you won that situation. It's, I, it's, it's not a win. It wasn't a fight. I just took it. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> if it was a fight, I'd have taken down the song. I would have said, okay, take down the song. Take it off all the radio stations. Take it. Mm, Could have bullied niggas. You let niggas you know, live. I, I mean, even now, I, um, I'm just waiting on the bread. Mm. Because you need to have the bread if you're going to take it to the States. Because the lawyers are going to frustrate you. Um, for Adele. Because she bit like the melody of, of, of Tapsy's Finally. And that's the song I wrote. Mm. Finally Take is it a far easy song. easy on me. Mm. Comes from the Finally. Okay. We have, we're going to do some research on that. So it's like, how? Mm. I wrote that shit. So if I hear someone else with the shit mm. that I wrote, I'm going to know that's my shit. Mm. So, you know. So that's from, a, that's here a big you, paycheck. from here, you just keep walking. Do, you have do, no do, plans. Do, do. <sighs> Dog. You don't just make keep plans? Nah, you know, men make plans and God loves. <laughs> 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 so, so, you know, I, I mean, the plan was to be in the States. I planned to uh, yeah. go Oh, yes, there. you told me about that. You want to move there, my man? video. Uh, they delayed my visa. Well, I, I, I'm going to live there. Yeah, Not move there. I'm gonna live in both countries. Oh, yeah. Well, excuse so gonna, us. Excuse no, 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 no. Because, no, like, no, the, you're right. There's a difference. There, there is a difference because mm. I have changed my mind. There was okay. a point in time where I was feeling like giving up on South Africa and living in South Africa. Okay. You know? Yeah. I, al- I also always felt like growing up when everybody else had a dream to move somewhere else, I always felt like I don't know if I'd ever wanna move from SA. But I also recently did kind of have a feel of maybe I could move, you know? Yeah. Okay, I don't think it, for me it was like uh, maybe I could move. It's just like fuck this country, bro. Like this country is really going that's to That's where the it came from. Oh, okay. Then maybe I could move, that's where it came from. No, me, it's not could. <laughs> like, yo, dog, this country is going to the dog. I have to move. It's, go- it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, I have to move. But my thing is this, is that I always used to ask myself this. When I was a kid, I was saying, if I was born 10 years earlier, would I be the kid who went to school and studied? Mm. Or would I be would across the border fought? in exile? Mm. And I always said, nah, I'm the nigga that would have fought. You would have been in the streets fighting? You understand what I'm saying? Mm. That's the battle I used to have mm. as a child, mm. right? But I was like, I used to be envious. I, like, ah, I wish I was born earlier. I was born in So you can prove that. You understand? Mm. 
And then I'm like, fuck. So that's why you live the way you live now. Actually, we are actually in that situation. Mm. We are in, at a point where we need to fight. And some of us mm. need to fight. And I've taken the decision that I'm going to fight. Mm. You know? And not everybody can fight. And I'm in a privileged position where I can fight. I can mm. afford to fight. Mm. Mm. You know? Mm. And that's the thing, is that it's not even like it comes from a place of arrogance. It comes from a, mm. a place of duty. My father worked Respect. hard so that he could mm. secure the type of life so that his kids wouldn't need to be workers. Mm. We could be scientists, we could be academics. We can explore. My sister's got two master's degrees and a mm. PhD. Mm-hmm. You don't have that unless you've got a rich dad. Because mm. you don't have room <laughs> to do that. <this. laughs> you understand, you need to get a job. Yeah. <laughs> I've been telling my sister to get you a proper get job. To it. Like, yo, like second master's degree? Like, uh, come on. Mm. <laughs> you, you know? Don't, yeah, <laughs> like, we can't do I mean, that. Yeah. yo, PhD? Like, mm. bro, like, get a job. Get yourself a nice sports car, you know. Are you not afraid of the political space? I see you dabble sometimes. No, nah, I'm not in the political space. But like just even the Civic conversation. Because mm. when you have the conversation, it kind of puts you in that space. You don't think that's going to put you more and more into... Look, I'm not afraid of dying. Because you start having the voice. I'm not afraid of dying. Mm. That's the thing. And I have this battle. I had this conversation with my aunt. Like my aunt called me. They're like, oh, you're going to get yourself killed. And I was mm-hmm. like, yo, bro, number one, I don't belong to you. I belong to God. <laughs> if God takes me, yeah. the last thing I need you to do is be pathetic and cry over God's decision. My to take goodness. Me. You need to accept it. Yes. You understand? I don't belong to you. You're telling the world, grow up. No, I'm telling my aunt. <laughs> You're telling her, grow up. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Because, <laughs> like, shit. So, so now, okay, because someone might kill me, I must stop what I'm doing. Mm. Is what I'm doing wrong? That's not how you Is move. it illegal? Mm. Is it uh, unrighteous? Is mm. it ungodly? Mm. No, it's not. So, unless it's those things which are my values mm. that I will not go against, mm. then there's n- nothing stopping me. You know, I can't be threatened by I because respect them. people think, oh, no, there's a danger. And also, at the same time, I also knew that, yes, if I'm going to say these things, I need to make sure that I'm prominent enough to defend myself mm. and also have resources so that if anybody were to ever do anything to me, mm. number one, the money in my will is going to start at investigating what happened to me. I love when you start talking money. <laughs> no, but that, that's the truth. It's yeah. the fact of the matter. Yeah. It's like, you know, my sister knows this. Yeah. You know, like, yo, I put you in my will. If anything ever happens to me, you've got every single financial Figure resource it out. Yeah. to find out what happened to me and mm. to get revenge or justice, at least. You can, you can settle every bill. Every bill. Mm. You understand? So there, and also, plus you don't have to pay to bury me. I'm taking care of. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, also on the bill. Yeah, that's also on the bill. Yeah. It's on the bill. Everything's on <laughs> my <laughs> tab. It's on me. It's on me. I got it's myself. It's on me. Yeah, it's on me. So I got that, it. Yeah, understand? I, you know, you I just pay, have to you execute. Pay the cost. Yeah, execute. You understand? So, yeah. Um, so that's what gives me peace of mind, man. Yeah, I like that. Um, the problem is that you can't transfer that peace of mind to other people. Mm. And it's been a very big challenge, especially from a family, like in my current family. Yeah. Um, because yeah, that's a tough fight. Yeah, that's because, no, fight. my parents, th- that's fine. Mm. My, my birth family, my new family, now that I'm married and everything else. Oh, okay. It's very difficult because they come from Zim. Mm-hmm. And they've seen what happens when you fight. People get brutalized. You know, they had fights in the 80s. Fights continued. They had even worse fights in 2008. And then what did South Africa do? We turned a blind eye. Tabon Becky said, no, you're not getting involved. Imagine. Mm. Now we must turn back those people that we didn't help when we could have condemned what was actually happening to them. Mm. Mm. We allowed it to slide. We allowed it to happen. Mm. We allowed it to happen. And I actually went to Zim myself. I went to Zim. I stayed in Bulawayo for a weekend. I walked the streets and everything else. You know, it was nice to be able to walk the streets in a town mm. like where it's packed. You know, like I'm in New York. Yeah. Like, no one bothers me. And I saw the suffering. It's like I saw where the guy who I see at the side of the road when I'm in four ways, where he is in his hometown in Bulawayo. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, we can't let our brothers down. Mm. We need to intervene in that fight because we are not as depraved a people as they are. Now, the deprivation comes from just being beaten up. And I've spoken about this before. I said, you know, when our enemy was the white man, it was very easy to now, okay, fine, we're fighting against the white man. Mm. But when your enemy looks just like you, 
Mm. You know, there's mm. nothing to demonize them. Because mm. yeah. there's too much relatability. You understand? So then mm. you start demonizing yourself. Mm. Dehumanizing yourself. And mm. that's why when something happens to a Zimbabwean, Helen Suzman Foundation is the one that speaks, not Zimbabweans. Ooh. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Mm. But let a, a kid be abducted by mm. a Pakistani a Katle home. Mm. She's why you're Yeah. Okay, we're not gonna allow yeah. any yo. You can't we don't go care. Down the kid way. was on Nyaupe, we don't care. It's one of mm. ours. You're not touching one of us mm. because we've learned that we've trained that, that yo, we have to protect each other like that. Mm. And but we can't protect it, each other from each other. Forever. Mm. Because there needs to be a known enemy, a known and visible enemy that's present. And right now, mm. we're turning that enemy into undocumented migrants and everything else instead of actually our enemy is our political ineptitude as black people. Oof. Like politically, we're bankrupt. Mm. And people are thinking about that. That is our enemy, you're right. And we, people are thinking about economic freedom and everything else. But there's no freedom without politics. Mm. You understand? So the if our politics aren't been handled everything, right, everything that we did was about a political mission to make history because mm. yeah. it was political. Mm. Had at any point I said, "But I'm not getting paid for the work that I'm doing." Had young, I said, "I'm not going to shoot. I'm not getting paid for this." And you said, ah, "But it's not like they gave me an advance. Mm. I could go yeah, out why to Sony and get a record go, deal. Yeah. <laughs> why am I out here in the yeah. hood busting it with these niggas?" Mm. Mm. But we had a political... I could go solo. I'm you understand? Mm. We had a political objective. To change the game. Mm. And that's what black people don't have. Yeah. And the thing is that you don't need money to have a political objective. Yeah. We had nothing, dog. Yeah. We had nothing. You just y'all need niggas, commitment. Y'all niggas were what you call. At Madison, how much is rent at Madison at the time? At that time, probably like two point something. And five niggas in one... Like seven studio. niggas. In a studio apartment. Yeah. Not even a one bedroom, yeah, a studio. Yeah. Studio apartment. You understand? Because what? For the mission. The political goal. Mm. It wasn't about the economic conditions that we're in. Mm-hmm. And everybody is chasing the economic condition. Julius Malema is chasing the economic condition, saying, yeah, if we must wear Gucci, we must wear Versace, we must do this, and then we must take back the land. Those two mm. things do not correlate. Yeah. You can't do both. You can't get those because you can't get the Gucci if you don't have a political motive to progress in life. Which then translate into, you know, economic benefit for your mm. political advantage in life. Mm. You understand? So, as a country, as a whole, there's very few people that influence this whole entire country. Mm. That's an opportunity and a challenge. Mm. So I ask myself, am I influential enough to influence those people? And am I influential enough to be amongst those people who are the most mm. influential? So you're open to, if you are, get in that space. No, it's, if the answer to that is yes, no, no, then no. you have to take the responsibility no, 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 to no, 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 use no. your influence. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm not going to be called. No one's going to say, yo. No, I'm saying you. if you no, 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 feel wait, wait, that wait, way. Wait, wait. No, it's not going to be a feeling. Yeah. This has always been part of my journey. When I did that IQ test when I was four years old, right? Mm-hmm. They asked me to draw a picture. I mm. drew a picture of a playground, and then I drew myself as a giant. And then all the other kids were small smaller kids. than you. <laughs> and the That's psychologist what... asked my mother, and my mother was terrified. Mm. Like, she's like, why would he draw mm. himself as a monstrosity? Mm. That's what my mother said. Yeah. Why would he draw himself as a That's monster? That's how she interpreted that. She said, my psychologist says, no, he's not drawing himself as a monster. He's drawing mm. himself as a protector. Mm. He mm-hmm. protects everybody. Yeah. He's That's the what, leader. You understand? Mm. And so I was born into the leadership position. I was born to have the answers. I was even given the name. <laughs> I was born. born to have the answers. Hey, that's fire. <laughs> Seriously. You know, <laughs> I was really given that name. So mm. it's a responsibility. Mm. And it's one that I cannot shirk. Okay. You and I need a part two. How do you close it for us? I was pouring this. <laughs> no, no, we'll I'll, have many I'll, parts. We'll yes, have many parts. Many parts we'll actually. have many parts. To yes. This. There'll, there'll be many parts How to this do you close it for us? But I'm saying, look. Because um, I like where you're at now. Congratulations on this journey. 
Thank you. You know, oh, I'd like shit. to, yeah, Thank congratulations you. on this journey. I think it's long overdue. You know, first you have to get over the, the, the rapper hurdle. Because I understand, <laughs> I never had the, <laughs> but the I'm a rapper nigga. hurdle. You didn't I, have to go through I that. I never man. had that. So I, I related what to What an it. advantage. You know, because so, I've spoken to niggas and I'm like, why don't so you so much of my time. And then niggas be like, mm, rapper. Mm, mm. <laughs> why you? And I'm like, why would I? That, but we had our moment, dog. <laughs> yeah, we did the thing. We've, so that's where my retirement came from. I was like, we did but this. Dog, how did this? I, we, you, I already we, did this. We need to fuck this 2022 batch of first years as well. Imagine. <laughs> Why? I Why? mean, like, so every year we're just finishing the first years. We'll end up stale, like fresh in them. I hear you. I hear you. Seriously, because those, those are our OGs. <clears throat> and we saw how they stayed with the lifestyle. They're still in the party lifestyle. They're yeah. not establishing, building bigger, beyond. They're still dependent on the mass media platform to put them on, to give them a job yeah, and everything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They haven't been able to yes. do anything on their own. Mm. Nothing on mm. their own. Mm. Mm. You know? Mm. And now they have nothing. Mm. They have to gig. Yeah. Dog, nobody calls me to make me have to be at a club at 2 a.m. <laughs> you can't pay me enough money I to be at a club at 2 a.m. Me. No, I not me. You. Yes, you can... Call whoever, mm. your favorites, whatever. It's mm. fine. But I'll tell you one thing. When mm. that nigga doesn't feel like going to sumo, mm. he has to go to he sumo. He has to, yeah. <laughs> he has to go there like, hey, fuck. You understand? So that, mm. I think if we close it on that note, and like, mm. yo, this journey is, is, this journey needs you. You understand? This journey needs you. This podding, this recording our history, it needs you. It needs someone like you. And also, I mean, damn, man. If, if you go out rapping, <laughs> who's going to write for Young Stun? <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, I'm just saying, you know, because, you know, in Davidson, the slang is nice, but but it's, we need them kungunjovu <laughs> handle. <laughs> <laughs> so, our title sequence song says, pick up your glass and show me love for once. What is the one thing you feel like you deserve love for that you don't get? And then let's show you love for that. Showing love. For showing love, mm. yeah? Because for showing true love, it takes a lot of love, a lot of passion, a lot of dedication to avail yourself, to be there, to be truthful, to be honest, you know, to be loyal, all of those things. You know what I mean? Like no one ever says, you know what? Actually, Nota's the most loving guy. But Nota held me down. He's a he's a loving guy. Mm. Like that nigga. If you need him, people don't recognize real love. They don't. They don't know what it looks like. You understand? Yeah. And 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 I can relate. And and love is patient. It's kind. It's understanding. And it means that sometimes I might be angry at what you're saying, mm. but I need to love you through it. I'm Thank done. you. La Vida Nota, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Chumped it with Buddha tea, please. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Thank you. Crazy. Thank you, guys. You killed it. Thank you, thank you. you I, I, also, I, also, I hope you killed it. It's crazy that the answers nobody had I found when searching for myself. Let's toast to victory. Pick up your glass, show me love for once. Let's toast to victory. There were two traps. Mm. The initial trap was white people. Mm. It was a combination of dubstep. Exactly. And and yes, yeah, stuck in that nigga. <laughs> that's right, nigga. That's the trap, nigga. That's the trap. Trap. <laughs>